I he met this his, guy. He gets his own music now. <laughs> so he's got his own music for the radio Louis show. used to just come in and, I know. and it was just like, oh, Louie's here. I don't see me. Now he gets his own music yeah. where he comes into. That's right. Don't you think that's the cheesiest thing yes. ever on radio or any other medium? When they play your music. Yeah, when they play like yeah. the music that you're associated with. Yeah, no, people it, out there are loving it, though. Are they? Absolutely. Is that like the, uh, is that this something song we is, don't realize? Because this song is so fucking cool. That's why. Well, it is cool. And I met the guy. Cool song. I met the guy at the premiere. Ian I was more, Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. I was more excited to meet him than anybody else. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was sitting at a table trying to, like, be uber polite and saying, you know, I did the theme song. But, okay, I'll sit over here. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. He's yeah. a great guy, Ian Lloyd. He's wow. I love them. We, we talked for a couple minutes. Yeah, he did. Our our version is our own. We made that ourselves. Yeah. And he sang it for us. Yeah. The actual. Couldn't find anybody else who could the, touch the, it. The guy. The, the, from the guy. From the stories. The um, the uh, premiere that we went to was, uh, what a great response from everybody. Too. That was pretty it was good, yeah. Fantastic, man. Uh, the show's, it's, what can you say? It's, it's so goddamn good. Thanks, guys. It's so fucking good. I think, we're, I think we're three episodes in already, right? Four, four, four? Yeah. four yeah. Oh, Actually, yeah, last, no, last night, night, night get... was five. Last night was five. Oh, man. Oh, last I... night was five already? Yeah. I'm one behind. I'm, I'm one back, yeah. I'm one back, too. Damn it. Yeah, last on... night was the old, uh, racist aunt episode. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> it's pretty good. I ruined it for you already. It's <laughs> <That's laughs> all right. That's that's a, yeah. I'll still love it. Yeah. It's it's the journey of the show, not That's so much right. the destination. Yes. How do you feel about being nominated for an Emmy? Uh, great. It was, you know, it makes for a really great morning when you find out. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't think I would get four. That was stupid. That's okay. fucked up. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't think I, would get four. I didn't think I'd get best actor. That was not a, anywhere near it's the crazy. Radar. So what? But yeah, you're up for the show. So cool. The show best <laughs> actor right. and what else? Uh, and then writing for the show. Wow. And then writing for my special, hilarious. Oh, wow. Out, and yeah. uh, editing my special. Wow. So editing, picture editing of a variety special. That's, that, that's what happens. That's the one I'm going to get, probably. That's what happens when you do all your own shit. Yeah. <laughs> when you what? get nominated, you really get nominated. Yeah, you get more. <laughs> what if it's you get all selfish. four? Are you going to have four Emmys? In uh, your I own? will have four then, yeah. <laughs> I want to see him just get the fourth one, stand up there with all four in two hands. <laughs> yeah! yeah! Motherfuckers. Just being a real <laughs> asshole about it. Yeah! That would be a great move to just be a huge asshole Just a huge it. asshole about it. Yeah, it's not that's gracious not, or anything. That's Louis, that's... This is because I'm better than all of you. <laughs> you all this, suck. This is proof. I, you don't <laughs> have is these. Proof. I, I, I think I sort of have to apologize to Louis because I gave him a backwards uh, compliment, but I want to maybe try to explain further. What happened? Yeah? I'm, what happened? You don't have I'm, to apologize. I'm not... I. I don't, and I don't even know why. I'm not a huge fan of Joan Rivers. I'm, uh -huh. I'm really not. And I don't know yeah. why. I probably should be, right? Don't but have to be. I love the Joan Rivers episode in uh, Louie, and I don't know how that came across to you. And I just no, I, I don't I, have any. I think not it, my mom or anything. But I think it was trying <laughs> to lady. show how how good this damn show is because you humanized her, and I really, and I actually, I think I like her now too. Yeah, she's a very likable person. And she works really mm. hard. And right. She showed up, and she was so into it. And uh, like when I was taking breaks, she was still running lines and. Really, it was really important to her to do it well. She seems like that from the documentary I saw on her. Yeah, like she's constantly got to be yeah at it. I'm very drawn to that. People that work really hard, right? Mm -hmm. That are really do it. So even why do you do this working. show? <laughs> <laughs> We're here. We're here. We work hard. We're here out of uh, obligation. Yeah, yeah. Not, we work not hard. So much artistic integrity. But you show up every single day. Yeah, well, that's do it. true. And the Joan Rivers yeah. documentary was really good. Yeah, but it, I I felt yeah. like she's. I don't know, like, wh what do you feel about that documentary? Like, she she didn't... Un I, eh, um, she came across like like she like can't just sit down for one you. second yeah. and enjoy, enjoy the fruits what of her labor. Did I, with her career. Yeah, I don't know. I don't never got close enough to her to see that. But maybe she just but likes she's got a that pretty, I mean, she's got a, like gold gilded chairs and pillows and shit. So. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. got to pay for she's all that She's got a shit. ridiculous apartment that's... You know, she lives like a queen. Yeah, but like from what I saw, it would be nice if she sat in that gold gilded chair every yeah, so often and, relax. and relaxed. And look what I did uh, with my career. It's always taking calls and this booking and I don't know. Would you ever shit. stop to do that? I don't think I would ever. I'd never be that one of those guys. Play, not not retire guy. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah, that's like the that's that's the road to to death. 
is retirement. Not if you play mm-hmm. golf. Yeah? Yeah. Got to get out there and golf? Yeah. That change, that makes it all worth it? You, I love golf, so. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I never. <laughs> I love golf. Oh, we just went yesterday. I, I went golfed yesterday. once. Uh, we bought a big uh, carton of balls, yeah. me and a friend of mine. Yeah. And we went two holes in, and then there was water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we hit all of our balls into the water. <laughs> like 20 <laughs> balls, and then we went home. <laughs> that was it for you. Yeah, we went. then we took the cart back to get more balls. And like, <laughs> yeah. once we got back to the clubhouse, like, Let's just get out of here. Like, this job. <laughs> it's doing. my fucking job all of a sudden. <laughs> yes. I'm like a fucking migrant worker pulling balls around the... Like, I have to do this. Uh, right. <laughs> God damn, that's no. so good. That's really so funny. So true. That and there's always people wanting to play. There's like always upset people. That want to play through. Want to play through. Yeah, come on. Well, because you're not supposed to uh, hit all your balls on one hole. No. The the proper thing is to all right. I take hit in the, the water. Drop, I got to drop it. And, I got to drop it somewhere it. around the water and move yeah, forward. Yeah, <laughs> not, not hit another twenty balls. Just stand there. I didn't know. Golly, I'm hot closer. today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the only game where you get to cheat. It's the only game where you're let, let to go. All right, well, yeah. Look, take I, one point, one point off. Yeah, yeah, point off, and, and then you get. I'll put the ball here. On? Yeah. I'll put the ball here because I can't seem to get it over the water. No, it's ridiculous. It really is something never liked stupid. It. I play with guys, and they'll come up with this mulligan thing, which is not an official rule. No. I think we also take a water ball mulligan. <laughs> That's not the PGA. <laughs> they you can't do up, that. They made up a name for something sure. that doesn't even exist. I've heard hangover no. mulligans. You yeah. know, we were all drinking last night, so let's do a hangover mulligan. No. <laughs> That's like in, That's ba- in baseball, game. like you strike out and go, I'm going to take a stashy. And then go, what's that? Yeah. What's that? <laughs> yeah. It's an extra strike. No, swing. I get a fourth strike. I get a fourth strike. Yeah. We call oh, it a stashy. Okay. Yeah. What? Oh, okay. No, Just make up a word and yeah, say, because I, I got jet lag. You know? Yeah, yeah. We had a fly in late last night. We're got all jet going lag. four. We're going to go four strikes today for a little while. Yeah, I, I can't seem to get the ball over the fence. <laughs> Louis, I need advice. Yeah. Mm. I, I love when you talk about your kids. Yeah. I really do. And um you have a baby now, right? Fourteen month old. And I'm starting yeah. to go to the playgrounds. Yeah. And I So am I. I don't have a kid. <laughs> I've had <laughs> right. I had another incident yesterday. I've had two major incidents. Oh. First of all, uh what the fuck happened? Why are well, you having incidents? First of all, I think all kids <laughs> Exactly. I think all oh really? <laughs> yeah. I thought you'd be the only no, one. What's happening all right. to you? <laughs> I think all kids, first of all, are passive aggressive assholes. Yeah, you you agree with that? Well, no, they're not. They're just what? They don't, have, they don't have the layers yet. Yeah, but I do. So they when just, I see them yes, act like that, I go, "You're a passive aggressive uh, asshole." People take in each other passive aggressively. You're not. The kid doesn't have any. How about when there's a little sprinkler shooting water up? A uh-huh. kid will step on it and then go, "Oh, if I just move my foot like this, I could spray this little baby in the face." And I let that shit go on. Obviously, I, I don't want to raise a, uh, a whip. No, that's true. They'll, they'll and then they'll uh, run away. Like oh, I, I know what I just did there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's passive aggressive. So what happened that it was an incident? Because right, well, that happens fifty times a minute. Well, playground. But my kid is really—he's probably the smallest kid in the playground. I might have went to the fourteen pl- months yeah. playground a little early, but uh, he's in a little puddle because that's yeah. what you do in New York City. You allow him to the hang out is, in a puddle. Yeah, and a, to a, get asphalt covered with yeah. Yeah, it's homeless it's, guy peed. On, oh, it chat. smells like shit. I, we got to shower and bathe him as soon as we get home. Yeah. So he's got a bucket in front of him filled with water. He's just discovering that he could fool around with a pail in water. Yeah. Kid comes running from uh, easily 20 feet away. He's about five or six. Yeah. And tries to kick the, well, he does kick the pail like it's a football. Yeah. The pail, the water, everything goes flying into my kid. Oh, wow. And I jump up and I actually Mm. said, I don't give a fuck. This is an exact quote. I don't give a fuck. How small you are, I will beat the shit out of you. <laughs> really? See, you said that to a kid? <laughs> see, see, now, wow. I knew Louie would not be able to I was praying that Louis, with you. Louie would go, yeah, I totally get it. I, mean, I lost my mind. And then a nanny popped up. Because uh-huh. as soon as I said up. that, I knew there's going to be consequences. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. if there's a father here, I'm fucked. I, she doesn't give a fuck, though, right? The she didn't care. Baby. She actually grabbed the kid <laughs> and gave him a timeout. Right. Yeah, he shouldn't have done it. She knew there was that the kid, but then I'm standing there as all the other moms are looking at me yeah, like, "Wow, look no at this fucking anymore. asshole!" Right? Yeah. But then one mom kind of nuzzles up to me and goes, "I just want to tell you, 
I'm glad you did that because that kid's a real asshole. Yeah. He broke uh, two of my kids' toys. Mm-hmm. So I guess he's already a terror. Yeah, look, look, I don't think you did the kid any harm. Um, I'm more worried about you. That's just that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's something you just probably shouldn't do. I came in. And that I just po- means you got. I mean, uh, you got to have a little more tolerance than that. And I, not, again, not for the fuck the kid. Let him get cursed at. I don't give a shit. Um, it's not going to help you with some moms. You might get to fuck that mom later if things. You know, <laughs> knows. Louis knows that part. Yeah. Of it. I go the the best. <laughs> Fuck the dog in New York City. If you're yeah. a single guy with kids, how mm-hmm. are you not getting laid? These well, moms are bored all day. Yeah. They, they they strike up conversations with you. Mm-hmm. I also never fat knew. And ugly. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be a, a pig sticker. Man. I never knew there was some something going on. Like I assumed, if you had a kid and you went to the park and you played, mm. like this was a one-time deal where you would see people. And then go home and never see them no, again. You see them all the time. Like these, you, you see the same people. Yep. See, I yeah. that's something I didn't even fathom. Oh god! So yeah. that these moms, you're seeing them every day, and the same dumb kids, and she's like, that kid's an asshole. Like you get to know the kids oh, yeah. are yeah. idiots, yeah. and the parents are stupid. And yes, you get to know. You who get who to the know kids all are. the people. I don't think it's so bad it's that weird. you did it in a way that you cursed out the kid. I mean, I think kids are overprotected and you Louis, know, I'll be honest. Got to get some consequences. Mm. I'll be honest, I was out of my mind and it wasn't right. But yeah. I, I then I came in and I told Jimmy and Ann, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do this parenting thing because I'm going to lose my mind to a point I'm going to probably get the shit kicked out of me by somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it, it's not like I'm well. Old. If it look, if it happens, then you'll be you'll that'll be a correction. That's true. You know what I mean? True. If it doesn't happen, you'll learn that that has that gives you power that you can wield. And I, I, so you'll I'm, be fine. I'm not being over. <laughs> I'm not being overprotective. If there's kids around his age yeah. range and he gets pushed over something, I'm letting all that shit happen. I, absolutely. Right. But when it's a five or six year old. You know, aggressively, yeah. pretty much almost kicking my kid in the head. Yeah. I don't know how. I don't know how to handle that properly. I just don't. Yeah, no, you're learning. It's. <laughs> I pushed you're the kid, finding out. I pushed a kid off uh, my son yesterday in another park. You yeah. put you pushed him off uh, and uh, physically, not to the point where uh, cops need to be involved. <laughs> and then his uh, his mom comes running over, knows the kid was wrong in this instance too, because my kid is really small. Uh-huh. And then the kid will listen to the mom, and I go, you better listen to her, or you're going to find out the hard way. Mm. Oh. Was that bad? Sometimes I've interceded oh. with uh, oh. kids uh, when their parents couldn't. Like, you know, when you see a parent just losing with a kid, I'll give a kid dirty looks, like, kind of scare the shit out of them. Yeah, looks. yeah, yeah, you can really scare kids I'll with stare, Like, when a kid's yeah. being a brat, like, no, I want it! And the parents just doesn't have the fucking strength <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. We got it. I want it. And I always stare at them. Like, I glare into their <laughs> eyes, and I don't look away. And the kid starts locking in, going, what the fuck is that guy looking at me? <laughs> yeah. And I just stare at them. Like, yeah, I see what a piece of shit you are. Yeah. Yeah. I see it. Because they know. They do know. Yeah. They know they're being assholes. They know they they're do. being pieces of shit. It is a world I had no idea about, man. I wow. mean, your kid wanders off and starts playing with another kid. Now, you're sort of following behind, but you're making it look like he's just on his own. And then all of a sudden, there's another parent there, and and the first question you ask is, "Hey, how old's your kid?" <laughs> Every time, I don't yeah. give a fuck how old yeah. your kid is, but you, you, all of a sudden you're doing small talk with somebody you would never yeah. talk to. <laughs> oh, she's 17 months, but mine's 14 months. Oh, really? That's the whole yeah, over oh, and over mm-hmm. and over again. Mm-hmm. That's the conversation. Sounds like have. Dullsville to me. Oh yeah, and then <laughs> yeah, it's pretty boring. But and then either one of the kids you do get. The, I get the the rage though. I get that. That's happened to me before, where somebody's fucked with one of my daughters, and I want to kill the kid. Or when you just see a kid walking around with a stick, <laughs> like slamming it into the ground, and you're looking at like, who the fuck? Is watching that kid. <laughs> he's he's looking for trouble. Who's their parent? And then you realize, oh, it's a grandparent. Like they got they're out with their grandparents. Yeah, the grandparents I, don't do shit. Oh, they don't have the uh, yeah. No. One more and the gumption. One more, and we can certainly move on. The other day, another kid. I had nothing to do with him. I didn't yell at him. Nothing. Kid, he's about three. Comes walking up to me, looks right at me, and hisses at me. Uh, and runs away. Like cat. And I'm like, I want to fucking kick Made your ass. Noise yeah. at you. I'm like, why are you hissing at me? Because he's a dumb kid. Kids are <laughs> weird, A lot of New man. York kids are raised in, like, alternative education. Mm. And they're given a very special mm. education led by their own curiosity. And it turns them into really egotistical little assholes. Little shitheads. Yeah. That's great. <clears throat> kids that go to public school are kind of checked by society. Yeah, know? yeah. 
Yeah, they got to fit in. They got they they have the 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 people that are more aggressive. Yeah, people that are more passive. It's yeah, it's their little they society. Figure out, yeah, right. They but figure out people. Fucking some of these kids. Oh, they're awful. And I've I mean, yeah. there's a kid in my daughter's class um, who's not okay. I mean, this kid's vicious, and his you mom know is, already right. Yeah, and his mom oh, is just a, ugh. so. <laughs> I'll I'll take moments and say you got to stop that. I've said some ser- pretty serious shit to that kid. Yeah, you got to <laughs> really? get your hands off my daughter. Wow. I've said to him, wow, off my daughter, like it. he's a grown up, like, a, yeah, like hey. he owns a gas station or something. <laughs> <laughs> get your hands off my daughter. And, and the kid's personality is already set. I look around that yeah, playground, and I already know who's going to be in prison. Mm-hmm. You know the whole deal. You know the sweet kids. Yep. The asshole, like tough it's guy. It's good kids though. And... It's good to observe. The people, though, and parents, like I've seen all kinds of, there was a, well, the last uh, place I lived before the one I live now, there was a park and there was a gay dad who was a really stern gay dad. I'd never seen that before. He was really, really gay. And he was like, I am going to slap you in the mouth if you don't stop. <laughs> he was really <laughs> strict and tough and very gay. <laughs> very Anthony, gay. stop it. <laughs> Stop, look at me, cause I'm fucking serious. This little hey, tiny kid. Yeah, and how do how do you? Well, his kid doesn't know. Yeah, his yeah. kid grows up with him being the tough guy, so he doesn't go. Right. Come on, Dad, you're queer. <laughs> he's like, stop with that voice. He thinks that's what a you know angry person sounds like. You're trying is. to be angry and yeah. trying to give me that voice, but ah, we all we all hear it. Yeah, <laughs> it's certainly a weird. Uh, I don't know. A yeah. weird world. I'm trying. I, I can't to imagine. Adjust to. I'm really trying, but I don't want to talk to these fucking people. You have to. No, I gotta talk no you to don't people. really have to. You don't? No. Bring a paper. Bring your phone. I, I, I'm just look at your hands <laughs> and just give people one word answers. Oh, really? Yeah. Because don't they come up to you? Because if they, yeah, if they your do, kids and you are just playing go, together, you're like, your, uh, you know, hey, how you doing? Huh? <laughs> 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 Didn't you? Did you come here yesterday? Yup. And then you turn your fucking face away from their face. <laughs> and you feel them. You, you sort of, when you're peripheral uh, vision, no. you see them going, ugh. Oh, what an asshole. And then walking away, and that's the end of that person in your life. That's, I do it all the time. That's so hard to do. It's hard to be really? an asshole. It's very hard to be an asshole without this microphone in front of me. No, like, man. like to, out in public, I really, I, I kind of want to be liked. And I'll be mm-hmm. overly like if somebody's talking to me, I will in my head. I'll be going, "Shut mm-hmm. the fuck up!" I'll literally. Sometimes I even mouth it like a ventriloquist. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I, I'm pretty good at like, like I could smile and be like, shut, "Why don't you shut the fuck up? <laughs> Just shut, shut the fuck up! I don't give a shit." I don't give a shit. And and, and they're just talking. Just so I can't like, but I'll be like, yeah, yeah, nod mm-hmm. my head. And, mm-hmm. and they'll keep going. Like, I'd love to be able to go, yup, nope. I tend to do that now. I didn't used to, but I do that now. And sometimes if I take my kids to Central Park, there'll be people there with their kids. There's certain areas, like there's these waterfalls and your kids can play and hear them. Mm. And somebody will have kids and they'll recognize me. And they're me and my kids and their kids are playing. Oh, and now they're got hey, it in. You're on TV, and I'm like, "Yep, okay, girls, let's go home." <laughs> oh, it's shit. the end of that. You know, I saw I'm not that here and talk to this guy. I don't care how much you're bonding with that kid. I don't care how <laughs> nurturing that is. <laughs> that Louie guy from TV, what an yeah. asshole! Yes. I saw him in the park. Totally. And our kids were like playing and shit. Hey, you just was a fucking asshole. <laughs> All I did was say, hey, I saw, I saw your show. His show's not even that good. I, fuck I was him. being nice. <laughs> but that guy's dreaming like, oh, our kids are getting along. Yes. We're going to have play dates. Gonna I'm going to go to Louie's house. Nope. <laughs> nope. Sorry. <laughs> gonna happen. Hey, we got a therapist on the line really quickly. Right. Uh, Steve calls the show from time to time. Steve, Connecticut, go. Good morning, boys. Hey. Uh, Opie. I think you're 100% right on the money with what you did. We're living in a, a world that's a moral never never land, and kids don't get consequences because everybody's afraid of being politically incorrect. I think you did exactly the right thing. Well, I'm, I'm worried because I know I'm, I'm going to go too far, and then I'm going to get the shit kicked out of me. Well, I know there's, it's a, uh, you know, it's a, it takes a village thing. Those kids don't just need their parents, they need other people. They need to find out from other people. That uh, that you can't fuck around, right? And, you're gonna get a reaction. Is, this is your kid. If if you're not gonna protect them, who will? 
So I say you're right on the mark. Oh, really? Uh, telling your kid I'll beat the shit out of him. <laughs> he was five. Well, you you're a therapist. Your you don't need the, the language is for you. You don't need the language. Right. You know what I mean? The kid's going to not, he's not going to be particularly impressed. All I would say is fuck is, is wasted there. Mm-hmm. And it's only, <laughs> only going to, you know, it's only going to bum people out in a way that you don't need. Yeah. If you say to a kid, I don't care how little you are, I'm going to kick your ass or whatever, I will hurt you. If you say it perfectly cleanly, it's actually worse. For the kid, right. yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, because it sounds time. real. I'm gonna try it next time. So, or, you are you? Or I'm gonna stay away from playing. You're playing. For a while. You're playing parental Russian roulette. I know because you're you're you've you've pulled it off a few times. I know you've clicked on an empty uh, chamber, and uh, but one of these days a parent is really gonna get mad. Maybe maybe the mother will be there and the father, and then the father will come over, and now you got that confrontation. I, know. I don't think that's one that usually happen. a girlfriend would would get you into. Right. You know? Yes, a girlfriend who doesn't was get saying shit. Yeah. I've told that story in a fucking movie theater once, mm-hmm. and and there was a, a row of Hispanic, uh, a, a whole family behind us, and uh, just or in front of us, just yapping, 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 wouldn't mm. stop. And my girl went from zero to a hundred. Just went. Would you shut the fuck up? That's crazy. And then it's like, oh no, you didn't say that to me. I was going. <laughs> you fuck you and stuff. And then, and the, and the guy that was with her actually went, he turned to me and goes, Oh, well, she put her, she put her in battle mode. Oh, battle geez. mode. And I'm just like, great. Now I got to diffuse this because yeah. I can't fight my way out of this. I had to diffuse it. She's fucking with your dick. She's like, yes. She's fucking like, yeah, with yeah. my dick. Yep. Yeah. And we, we actually wound up having to get up and go into a different theater to watch the movie. Because there was a threat of physical harm Jesus. to her. And then I can't just sit there as she's getting her face pummeled. Yeah. So I got to jump in, which yeah. means the guy's got to jump in. Yeah. And now there's a big uh, brouhaha. Mm-hmm. And I don't need that. Mm-mm. But uh, what, what, what I'm seeing is something that's very similar. You could get yourself into that type of brawl situation. I'm fully aware. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm an they, idiot. You know the thing that people. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I, I, I know I'm an idiot, <laughs> and I got to figure this shit out because it, it's going to get bad. The thing that people seem to forget is that if it's not okay ever to hit anybody, though. Mm-hmm. Like, even if you yell at somebody's, if somebody yelled at your kid, right? Somebody called your girlfriend a cunt in public. You're still not allowed to hit them. But a lot of people do, yeah. especially like yeah, if you yell oh. at a kid or a, a it's cunt like whenever, whenever there's cops on a scene, whenever there's a fight and cops show up, yeah, they always may remind everybody of shit that. Like, it's, well, he said the thing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the cop has to say, say like, it, you're not allowed to hit a person. You, you hit him because he said something. Yeah, no, no oh, matter. Right? It doesn't matter yeah. what he said. <laughs> uh, you may not raise your fucking hand to another human being <laughs> unless they were doing it to you. And That's you have, the only reason you're allowed to. Right. And you have, se- you have self-control like that? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't hit anybody oh, if they fuck, said I know. something. I, will hit, I was like, yeah, it's not. It's unacceptable to hit like somebody because of verbs that came out of their mouth. There's no. It's absolutely. It's amoral. I will hit a father. Now, what happens I, though I know I in will. a situation where where you're facing off? Like, there's a point where you go, there's a fight going to start. Yeah, if you and it's if probably you best need... I get the first That's fucking different. lick in. You know. Yeah. For self-defense. That's yeah. the only reason it's okay to hit anybody. Mm. Yeah, okay. Is to protect yourself. Yeah. Not because you're angry because they said some shit. <laughs> when you fucking four, you're I mean, not allowed I, to do that. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I'm surprised that like you they don't hurt. like what they said. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that. And so I get to f- fucking injure your body. <laughs> That's <laughs> ridiculous. Roll up my hand into something hard yeah, and, and punch you in the and fucking and eye and maybe blind you, you in your and, eyeball because I didn't like what came out of your mouth and, 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 and fucking introduce a random violent energy <laughs> that could end with somebody dying. Right. You never Every know. Every time you you're know. in a fight, you're, you've rolled the dice. Yeah, Something yeah. really fucked up could happen. There's been people that have punched people and they fall, bang their head. Oh, and they're sure. dead. Some guy's in prison going, I just went to clock him in the face yeah, like I do all the time. Because his kid yeah. was an asshole. Yeah, yeah he yeah. said something kind of a little untoward. And now you're fucking, it, you're shackled yeah. at the ankles. I and... wasn't pleased with the things he said. So <laughs> yes. now I'm in prison for the rest of my life and he's blind. <laughs> and we we met and cried. There was a whole Yeah, reunion. yeah, we made up. But, uh, but then I still had to go back to my cell. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm in prison. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that sucks.
Mm-hmm. No, it's not okay. All right. I, got, I got to work on it. Oh, Opie. The other thing is because he's so he's so young and has just complete innocence still. Yeah. Like seeing like I see it, but he doesn't see it yet. Disappointment. Yeah. How do you how tell did me, you deal tell with me that? Get the fuck no, used to that you, shit. That's brutal. <laughs> you, there, you, you got to let him. You mean for the, him being disappointed? In he's the, not disappointed yet, life? but I like all of a sudden he'll innocently go up to another kid to try to play or like hand him one of his toys, and the kid will either completely ignore him or rip the rip the toy out of his hand and run away. <laughs> yeah. And my fucking heart breaks. Yeah, yours is breaking. Oh, I know he doesn't he's understand fine. that yet. Yeah, it's not that he doesn't understand. It's that he's okay. I mean, I this is something I learned from my first daughter. Yeah. Was to how to have any positive outlook on life at all. <laughs> like, I learned it from her. Uh, like, shit. I let her lead me out of the wilderness of that. Because I've, to me, it's like, as soon as she was born... My first thought was, when is she going to realize that this is this is tor- life is torture? <laughs> like, when is it going to hit when, her? When does it hit? Because she looks so happy, and she, you know, I thought because I always, I was used to think about birth as this awful. You know, you were in a in a womb, and it was warm. You were just your body was filled with fluid, warm fluid. Like there was <laughs> yeah, no yeah. no conflict. Like being in the Matrix. Yeah, <laughs> taking a breath is an immediate like it's an invasion. Yeah, you can feel. Your body attack whatever came in that shouldn't have. <laughs> the air is a little cold. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like a. That's the way I look at life as a struggle. Just even just being alive. Right from the get go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I figured a kid is born and then they are like just irritated and angry. But she was so positive. She was so mm. happy to be alive. And so I realized to her, somebody taking you know to her reaching out to somebody and them walking away. She's like, well, somebody, you know, something else will happen. Something I can else. do this by myself. <laughs> Your kid isn't stupid. Your kid is uh, just looking at life from a positive. Your kid's not like, oh, fuck, that kid walked away from me. <laughs> that's what you say. That's or what I, you that's feel. What, that's what I'm saying, actually. Yeah, yeah but you, you let the kid follow the kid's example. I, a baby's a perfect person in a way. They like, they're, they're like an animal. They're like that you can learn what human beings really like from babies. Right. Because you're seeing a human instinct. Without any of the without any bullshit shit that's yeah. been pumped in from yeah so other you get people. It's like babies' diets are perfect. They because the, the, they just eat what they need. So all of a sudden, your baby will only eat carrots for like a month. Well, well, it's beta carotene uh, deficiency. Just needs that. Yeah, your baby's not like oh, I can't stop fucking eating carrots. <laughs> your baby just wants that thing for a while, uh, and they'll God. stay away from the grains you give them or whatever. <laughs> You know, I'm fucking learning some stuff today. This is this to me though sounds like 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 parenthood Hell? is a fucking nightmare. I oh, don't it's great. see it's it, great. No, no, it sounds like it's a, 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 just years of this emotional roller coaster mm-hmm. that that a human shouldn't have to go through. It is. Gr- <laughs> I, it's just. But the, the attachment you have, it's hard to explain. It is great. I'm, I'm with Louie. I'm all in. I love it. But, you know, I'm trying to learn. Well, yeah. I'm trying to learn my way around it. Well, still. that's so, uh, as long as you're doing that, you're fine. As long as you're actually, um, trying to learn and not take, trying to hold on to what you were like before. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's no, it. No, just no. say goodbye, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. But that's, <laughs> oh, no, yeah. A lot of that that's is all- positive. You get rid of shit that you've, because your life becomes just a series of cravings and, <laughs> Death disappointments and <laughs> sh- gray versions of shit that you thought you were going to get. But if you give up on all the things you thought you used to want, you start getting new shit from it. A lot of that mm. stuff has already left me. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. I got I got some things I got to figure out, like how to not curse at little kids and things like that. Right. But, but in general, my life is drastic. The fact that you leave that situation introspective and asking questions from people you oh, know yeah. means that you're doing fine. Yeah. If you were just a oh, fucking kid and I said, fuck you, and his mom looked at me, I was like, fuck her. And then if you just stayed that way, you know, people that you can just see, that guy's not thinking about what he's doing. Mm-hmm. He's not even gaining from the guy. Th- this, from- this might be impossible for you guys to, to even consider because yeah. you're so emotionally attached. <laughs> but this to just your sounds like a hassle to you. I understand. But, but are there things that you absolutely can't do now? That you would love to be able to do, but you have kids. Like, I understand the part. The great part is having the kid and, and there's that, all that love stuff and everything. Yeah. But, but, like, that aside, and I don't even know if you could put that aside, but if you could, just put that personal thing that, that you're in love with this little yeah. human being. Uh, are there things that you're like, fuck, man, I really want to do that? 
Mm. Um, well, yeah, but some of them uh, have died down yeah. after a while, and you can do a lot. I can't think of anything I really can't do that I want to do. I mean, I wouldn't mind moving to another town. Sometimes I think about that. Yeah? Like, at this point in my life, what if I could move to San Francisco or Philadelphia for... You know, or Canada or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. I can't really Just, do it because I got to maintain my kid's life. So there's a stability that I got to maintain. Yeah, it seems That to I can't me. walk away from. But still, I mean, I to me, the best thing in the world is to have kids and then get divorced. <laughs> because then <laughs> you really can do anything you want. Because uh, it's more the wife that would hold you back That's than, exactly than the right. kids. I have my okay. kids half the week. And even if you get along with your wife... You still you have a, you have to make bargains and compromises with pretty much every moment of your life, especially once yeah. once there's a kid, you you start um, you got to share that responsibility. So you start every moment. It's like where are you going? If you start leaving uh-huh. the house, wait, 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 wait. What are you doing? Because I would like to get the fuck out of here. Oh, okay. So yeah. where are you going right now? It better be f- well. I'm just gonna walk around. No, nah, not good enough. You're sitting here. Because I'd like to walk around, so neither of us is going to get to walk around. So we'll just be miserable. We're just sitting sit in this here room, with the fucking baby, till one of us has like an emergency <laughs> reason to get out of here. That's when it starts being. <laughs> we uh, we take turns. Oh, that's horrible. We don't spend as much time as we used to together because we're taking turns because we don't have a lot of help. It's really yeah. smart to do that to take turns. But we take turns like each other. You just made a great point. Why are we both sitting here? Stupid. One of us can watch the kid. You know, I I do a lot of quality things with, with my son. So uh, now I'm going to go to the gym. Yeah. Uh, she has her thing she wants to do, and we kind of take turns. But unfortunately, huh. that means we're not together as much as probably we would mm-hmm. like. Wow. But we understand well, this, that. It's great that you're doing that. And let one person, if one person's awake, the other person should fucking be sleeping. Yes. <laughs> so that they'll be useful when the other person on, finally on taps watch. out. If you're, you're it's just lots. the dumbest thing in the world. It's like having a... You're, if you're driving a car and then you go just turn the other one on in the, in the garage and let it run <laughs> while you're driving one car. <laughs> Makes no sense. Louis. Why would you do that? Yeah, Cause, well, because the that? car God that's driving right. is like, no, if, I, if I'm out here <laughs> dragging people and groceries around, you're going to at least be running, <laughs> you piece of shit. Like if your cars were married to each other. <laughs> a lot of parents make that mistake where they put the kid in the room or whatever and they both have to stay awake all night. He's making an Stupid. amazing point. If you you guys have a good relationship, then because the only reason to share that shit is because you don't like each other, right? Because you want to put each other through shit, through right. some some hell. No, that's wow. the best is when you can you can do that, yeah. and you're doing the right thing by spending a lot of time with your kid because you well, start getting it's like the thing it, you're dismissing in the first sentence. Yeah, right. I get the the love, but uh, okay, <laughs> that, that that's thing, the big part. That's it's the like, huge part. It's like saying. Uh, look, I get that you like living, blah, 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 and, but why not kill yourself? <laughs> I mean, granted, yeah, yeah, yeah. life is worth living. That's... Death is terrifying, but still, why don't you just die? But there is, there is a sacrifice that's being made by, by having children. You're, I don't, I don't know whether it's that important, uh, of a sacrifice or whether the child is such a great thing that, that the sacrifice isn't even a sacrifice well, to you. Well, for dads, it's the thing that you don't know automatically is that you should be with the kid. Right. Uh, yeah. So I always, I kind of had this instinct, be with the kid is a lot, and then it's not a sacrifice. Like the shit you have to, the fucking shit you have to do, the amount of errands you have to run, and uh, shit you have to go, the, the logistics of yeah. keeping food and supplies in the house the thing I started doing is just always bring the kid with you. Mm-hmm. Always, I'll take him, and then the your, the mom is like, "Fuck, great," <laughs> because your kid is great company. They're great. They're really fun to be with. Mm-hmm. If you go out, I, I used to love going out shopping for fifty things. As long as I had my daughter with me, she's just somebody to talk to. Right, and you see the world through their eyes. <clears throat> yeah, you get to show your shit. kid every. Like I used to go to the supermarket, yeah. which I used to hate doing, yeah. but I'm like, oh, I take a watermelon off the <laughs> shelf and put it in her lap. <laughs> Look at this; it's a fucking watermelon. <laughs> you never seen one of those before, have you? <laughs> and she's got like this a... green. She's never seen a. Wa- I handed her her first watermelon. And watched her look at it and go, Jesus. <laughs> That's amazing. And she just held it in her lap. I see I always Travis gave laughing his ass off, too, because Travis is a new dad. Well, relatively new, you know, two-year-old. Two-year-old. Yeah, that's right. So well, you I give, you Travis give, gets this, too. I always gave my daughter access to the real world. I don't believe in, uh, to- like, toys or shit. Toys are, like, fake yeah. things. 
So but, you a, but a watermelon a is like, holy shit, yeah. that's a watermelon. Or a com- just give her your computer. Just <laughs> here, take this. <clears throat> just give her fucking movie cameras and shit to just hold. And, see, whenever uh, I see fondle. kids doing that, all I can think of is they're, they're going to break it. They they're going to fuck it up. They might. I might break it. I think. Follow- <laughs> I don't yeah, that's care. True. Okay. I don't take care of my shit anyway. Following your logic, Ant, like yeah, you, don't, yeah. you don't have a connection to the kids, so it's it's hard to explain. Right? Like you just see like other people's kids, and you're yes. like, why would you do that? But yeah. as soon as your son is born, your life changes fucking instantly. Yeah, and, I, so, and it's hard to explain to anyone. And then maybe some of the stuff you miss, like we used to go uh, down to the Caribbean every year. This year we didn't go. Yeah, I miss it. Yes, but it's but like Louis says, it's sort of pushed down though. I'm not craving it. Like fuck, I can't believe we didn't go this year. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. It's and, and it's just okay. See, that's okay. what I was. That was my point. Like, that's okay. Yeah, but we're gonna go next year, and I'm gonna bring the kid, and, and I know we're gonna have a great own, time. Everything they do that fucks with you is positive in the end. Like my kids, when they'd wake me up at six, oh, and boy. I went to sleep at three because I'm a night person. Oof. Well, they yeah. wake me up, and I the feeling in my brain would hurt a lot. Like I don't want to fucking be up right now. Yeah. But within ten minutes, we're talking. I'm talking to them, Holy and they're in the morning. They're just they got a good attitude in the morning. I've got one eye open. And I'm going, yeah, what, <laughs> daddy? I had a dream. Okay, what? And I'm just listening to it, I can't. and then I'm like, wow, that you had that dream. That is, biz-. you know. Then you're getting into conversation with your kid, and they're nice to you. <laughs> you know? I mean, some people have a contrary relationship with their kids. Yeah. And they are always, you know, Dad! Like those kind of kids. Yeah, yeah. Fucking, I would tap right out of that life. <laughs> I'd fucking but dye my hair and get the fuck out of it. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, yeah. Both of my girls and I have really good relate, And the, the little one and I, we fight sometimes and it's contentious, but never feels like a bad no, fun. Yeah. I- it's yeah. also when your kid is being an asshole, it's it feels good to know you're there to correct it and to say, no, nah, you're not. Like when I lock horns with my daughter, she wants something and I'm not going to give it to her and she's crying. I feel great. Really? Yeah. I feel great that I'm there That's showing her. Yeah, you don't get that. You don't get to have it. And why? And There's not a good reason. You just don't. You just cause, don't because I just said don't. so. You just don't. And, and there's no um, uh, embarrassment in public places with temper oh, tantrums and couldn't stuff. Couldn't care less. No, you couldn't care less. Yeah, I don't think shut I'm gonna the world fuck out either. You yeah, don't care because no. I, I I hate that. I, I I look around and when kids are being like loud and stuff, I don't mind. In well, I do mind all the time. But there are certain places I understand. Like, all right, I'm in a mall. There's yeah. a kid. He doesn't want to be here. He's going to be yelling and screaming. I could get away from the situation. But there are other places, movie theaters, things yeah. uh, the, uh, where I'm like, shut shut that fucking kid up mm-hmm. or take him the fuck out of the movie. You're missing the movie. Uh, take your kid out. Pick him up. M- go out to the lobby and well, fix that problem. But if the problem. kid is the same, I mean, the kid, I always, though, also remember that your kid is a citizen of the country, too. Your kid has rights. Like, I go, I go crazy when people, like, fucking... <laughs> knee my kid in the face because they're not looking holy shit you know they don't give people, that people don't give a shit and it's like my kid has fucking rights you know and yeah so to me it's like your kid the kid who's yelling in a the movie theater is no different than the fucking dirty hispanics you're talking well, about yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing they're just being loud assholes the kid is yeah yeah I wonder, don't you think I you could I'm... avoid some of that stuff by raising them properly though I, I know you're not gonna be perfect, but yeah, I don't. My I don't kids, think my kids gonna be acting up in. Uh, no, my kids wouldn't I do that. Yeah. You can tell when you look at the parent that they're weak. Yes, and that they're they're they don't do it at home. They don't try. They get underwater with it. They're, they're not, allowing uh, too much. Yeah, I don't too much. No, my kids don't. Mm. They don't make a scene. They generally don't. Yeah, and if they fine. and also the other thing is he, he people get too bent on getting through their day the way they planned it. So when your kid explodes and you're trying to push through the day, I'll, I cancel everything. Yeah. If, the, if, if we're getting into a hairy thing with one of the kids, I just put everything down on the sidewalk and sit on the sidewalk and go, we're not going now. Let's, See, you have this. Let's talk about this. That's because I don't have, that's because I'm not married. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. get to do that. Hmm. Wow. It's if a, you're married, you got to fucking yeah. plan everything. This, and this is again, if you're getting along, this is in a bad marriage. Right. You have to plan everything. You have to agree. On every fuck, every fucking detail, yeah, of how something's gonna go down, and you have to stick to your plans. 
It's that's a nightmare. I took my kids camping a couple weeks ago, and the reason it worked is because I was able to do it myself, and I had the power to pull the plug on the whole thing. You did your right. way. Yeah, I said I I said let's just get in the car and just go south, <laughs> and I went to a sporting goods store. With the girls, and I'm buying a tent and sleeping bags, and they're like, are we going camping? And I was like, we might. <laughs> I said, I don't know yet. I haven't decided if this is going to happen. We're going to buy these things. We may or may not use them. So we put all this shit in the trunk, the camping stuff, and we drove. And my, in my head, I was like, I didn't have a place to stop. Mm-hmm. I didn't use a map. I, I just fucking drove down the Jersey Shore. And we saw a hotel. So let's, oh, let's stay there tonight. <laughs> stay in a <the> hotel. <laughs> Next day, I always had the option to just run back home. It's like you're on the lam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Found a ferry that goes to Delaware from New Jersey in Cape May. And this beautiful ferry boat just found it, went to Cape May. I'm all about that. Oh, and then, I don't like a plan. I no, was so jump, I just want to wow. jump in the car and go sometimes. And the kids don't know, and they don't give a shit. And then yeah. there's a state park. I see a sign for a state park, and I go, hey, do you want to go camping and sleep in a tent tonight? And they're like, Yeah. And so I pull over. But again, as I'm putting up, I, I didn't never looked at the instructions for the tent. <laughs> I opened the tent at the campsite. <clears throat> yeah. And as I start building it in my head, I'm like, if this gets gnarly, we're, there's a fucking hotel 10 minutes from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. just yeah. go to the hotel. Kept it Yeah, safe. but we did it. We we spent the night in a fucking, in the middle of a, the wilderness. Yeah. I, I, a six cold. and a nine-year-old. And there there's a well that with a pump. And they were making, they were cleaning and making, we made dinner. It was fucking amazing. It was one of the greatest nights I ever spent it, on earth. It's the, it's the best way to do things. I was recently in Philly for a birthday party, uh, and we had to go all the way up to Rochester to hang out, you know, at Brother Louise's place. He has a place, a cottage on the bay. So we're leaving, and my wife goes, where are we staying tonight? And we were leaving at 8.30 at night. I go, I don't know yet, mm-hmm. but I'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. And to me, that was really exciting. Yeah. I know there's a million motels out there. We're not going to sleep in our car. No. But I don't know where we're sleeping yet. No. I don't know how many hours I want to drive. We might drive all the way. Yep. I might get a cup of coffee and just make it all the way to Rochester. Mm-hmm. Or we might stop in an hour because I'm like, fuck this, or maybe three hours. It's and, it, and it's freeing. See, that it was, is. It's great. I mean, that's what w- so with my girls. I called it a road trip. We just right. said we're on the road. We're not going. Where are we going? I don't know. Yeah, no real we just went on a road trip, and because they don't, they're not fucking nosy grown ups. <laughs> they don't. Well, have where to are? Know. Well, how far is it? To, where are we going? Can you just find out? Can you call? <laughs> <laughs> they're just in the back seat reading and having a good time. And then once in a while, I'd stop and go, "Get out here! What is this? It's a national preserve. Look at the birds." <laughs> they're like, "Wow!" And then we're we're camping. We fucking camp. We wake up. We break camp. And then next thing you know, they know they're in Washington D.C. They had no idea how close they were. I'm like this is the nation's capital. Look at Abraham Lincoln. They're like, "Oh my God!" And I have. I, I wrote my manager like right before I left because I thought I might be in D.C. to say, do you know anybody at the White House? It's like, do I have any <laughs> oh, connection man, to the right. White House? But they didn't know this. If I had a wife, I would. Have, I think I might be able to. Do you really know anybody? You know, did you get us the thing at the White House? Uh, but the, that morning I woke up, the morning we got to D.C., and they said, we got you a tour. with wow. a, a, One of Obama's speechwriters has a fucking eight. He wants to get into comedy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> so you had to listen to his Yeah, joke. so I just take my daughters to the White House. They have no idea. Just come on. Just come over here. And we go in the fucking, go up to the gate, and I tell my name, and, and they open the gate to the fucking White House. And we walked in and had a personal tour. By this dude, and, and looking that's at it from right. looking at it from a kid's perspective, that's way better. It's a great day because he has no, yeah. th- they have no idea what's going to happen. But they mm-hmm. also don't have an I- idea that that is an amazing dad right there. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah that is amazing. like yeah, I went to the White House. Super dad mm-hmm. just took him on, camping, White House, friggin' a, a hand pump. Th- yeah. That's great shit. It was insane. And that's I, not like you know, oh, fuck. All right, let's go. You know. But anyway, Let's Louis, go to the mall, buy some yeah, shoes. Exactly. What well, Louis teaching you, it's not like everything has to be planned and stuff. You yeah, could, you could just go with it, even though, like in my case, it's a fourteen month old. You would think maybe we should have a, a planned fucking. And that's the thing I setup. always thought. Like, okay, and and from hearing, it spontane- spontaneity like disappears when you have kids. Well, I'm but sure you just like that. 
Hold on. You're on your own. You is can, the you, ultimate in spontaneity. You can do it, and and they don't know how. I mean, I'm I'm sort of looking ahead a day, and I'm looking at possibilities. And, uh-huh. You know, I'm using my iPhone and finding shit. <laughs> sure. But if the White House thing had fallen through, they never would have known it was even on tap. <laughs> yeah, right. No, no disappointment. No, you just do. Oh, okay, we got this. Come on over here. Yeah, let's do this. You could have gone to the park across the street yeah. and, and look at homeless people, and that would exactly. be cool too. <laughs> and then at the end of the whole yeah. trip, we had to drive home. So it was like four, five hour drive. Yeah, and I right. told them, you're going to pay for the trip now. It's five hours of driving through fucking New Jersey. It's not going to be in, in Delaware. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, but that's, that's payment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's worth that's it. The, yeah, it's worth it. something, man. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think being a parent has to be a major sacrifice. You're certainly making sacrifices, but mm. it doesn't have to be so drastic. Yeah, you take your kids to what you do and, uh, I mean, as their lives get more involved, you have to start. It's hard in New York. It's hard because you have to manage all their lives. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you have to go to all their shit. You have yeah, you to arrange just, all their shit. You can't let them outside, eh? That seems it's like a, lot, a lot, but it becomes a traffic. Yeah. Uh, it becomes a traffic jam in your head that you just learn to. Yeah, it just, it just becomes like second nature. See, I like I like sleep. See, and that's something you, you don't seem to get a lot of. I, I noticed when I, you talk to parents. Um, I like uh, I like guns. Guns and children, ah, they really go together <laughs> that well. Anytime you hear about that combination, it's never no. good. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 I like drinking a lot. Yeah. Um, that seems to be a bad thing around kids. Yeah, you can't have like the Martin Sheen in the hotel room nights. Right, right, right. When you have a kid, you can't. But, but I'm, th- that I'm thing thinking somebody like, will call you, how are you? And you're like, oh, fine. And they don't know that it's been like 72 hours. <laughs> yeah, Bender. <laughs> just, yeah, just, just the total. Up. Benders are out. Yeah, they're gone. No more Benders. Well, Kenny told me once that he used to like to drink a lot. Club Soda Kenny. He had his mm-hmm. pops, you know? Yeah. I go, why'd you stop drinking? He goes, because kids don't understand hangovers. Yeah. Uh, so that was his thing. He's like, fuck this. I'm not. Gonna wake up uh, after drinking all night, three hours sleep. Like if a kid tries to pound you on the head and 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 wake you up at six in the morning when you have a raging hangover yeah. and want to sleep till noon, there's a problem. But see, I would consider that an upgrade to your life. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> look, look, me, right. look, I'm not I saying would look at that as an fuck improvement. Fuck that! I'm sacrificing a hangover <laughs> for kids. Fuck that! Then suddenly no, I, you're I, getting I, up at six I with a clear that. head and actually me- greeting your kid with breakfast when they wake up. You're actually a better human being now. I do understand where that's coming from. I'm not trying to sell the hangover part no. as the, the one of the sacrifices. You, yeah. you really got to get rid of selfishness. Yeah, but again, yeah, yeah, again yeah. That part have has kids to go. and then get divorced because <laughs> right, I get both. Right. Okay, yes. I, get, I mean, I, my kids are with me half the week, three and a half days, and it's not. so I'm not visiting with them. They're I'm really uh, raising them, but I get a whole half of the fucking every week. So does it affect I'm your, just a grown up? You're dating, you know, with, with dating. I do and whatever stuff. I want. Yeah. I, so that's not when an I'm issue. with the kids. That's time to be with the kids. Yeah. And also, I, I I'm a better father because when I'm with the kids, I put everything else aside. I don't have to juggle uh-huh. kids. And uh, I'm also self-employed. And what I do, I can control. Right. When I work, even on my show, when we're in production, we only shoot half a week. I don't, oh, really? I don't, don't work do and that's the whole week. That's one of the reasons I did the show the way I did, because I don't want to have to work five days a week. Sit there five days a week. And, yeah, mm. because I don't have a, a wife at home. So if my kids are at my place and I'm working, they're just like, why do I have custody of my kids just so they can be with some lady I fucking hired? <laughs> yeah. It's pointless. <laughs> yeah. It'd be yeah. better if they were there with their mom. Right. But because I control my show, I we shoot half the week. And then I don't have, when I don't have the kids, I work like 14 hour days. And then when I oh, do really? have okay. them, I just fucking, yeah, uh, Jesus. it's just me and them. Hey, uh, John from Allentown says enough with the kids, uh, talk. So we, we better stop because John's, oh, it's, John's well, not into go it. Fuck oh, fuck yourself. No, John. no, that guy's John from Allentown. What are you uh, nuts? Yeah. Hey, John. Yo. What's up? Hey, uh, enough with the kids talk, man. I got a four-year-old and stuff, but it's boring already. I don't think it's boring. Oh, It's well, boring to you, and that's that. fair enough, but. Do you got to explain things to, to people? Like, this yeah. is a whole take between two guys. A very different take. Varying parents. One guy that doesn't have kids and can't even fucking understand it. That's what I mean. We're conversing as human beings, you tool. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you I, really, really got under your skin. I'd like guy. to punch him for saying that. <laughs> There's a guy, he, he couldn't hang around. 15 days in jail. What? Because he got in a fight with a father. 
Oh, shit. Oh, wow. And another guy detained for two hours for telling a kid that he was going to knock him out. Do you want to talk to Mike? <laughs> a threat of violence. Mikey. Yeah, could I, be a problem. I have I've brought this up probably three or four times already on the show because I am deeply concerned in my own brain that i got to figure this out sooner than later. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, man, it, it, it's, uh, it was 4th of July, and I took my, my wife and two kids to a fair. And uh, there was a line of kids, and these older kids kept knocking them down. So I just walked over, and I leaned into one of the older kids that was knocking kids down, and I said, hey, I leaned in, thank God. And I said, hey, you knock another kid down, I'm going to knock you the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Good for you. <laughs> well, yeah. so what happened, uh, though? 20 minutes later, I'm taking one of my kids to the bathroom. Two cops come out of oh, nowhere. Oh, boy. They pull me aside. My whole family had to stay there for two hours, and I started losing my mind. Thank God my buddy was there, who's a lawyer. And thank God I denied it from the beginning to the end, saying Good. I never said anything. And I kept saying to the cops, let me ask you something. 15-year-olds are here at the fair. I'm here. I'm a 40-year-old guy at the fair with my family. Who do you think came here to cause trouble? Nope. They kept me for two hours, man. They wrote me up. I have, a, like, some whatever kind of record now. Oh, oh. wow, man. When I, when I was a kid, if, if my kid came to me and said, hey, some old guy threatened me, I, I would... I would have gotten slapped, and my father would have said, what did you do? <laughs> what did you do? Yeah. Yeah. Times oh, have Jesus. changed. He's right about that. If, maybe for the better. He's right. Yeah. Ah, what did you do? Ah, ah. <laughs> hey, hey, Stop guys. being an asshole. No, he's right, though. I mean, that's – he has a right to say that. The kid, the kid you said it to was 15? Yeah, I don't know. They were, like, early teens. Yeah, fuck that. Oh, fuck that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. If, if you're a teenager – I'm You're never... fucking grown up. Yeah, yeah. This is in suburbia, guys. This is I'm in I'm in suburbia, New York, upscale area. The kid went and told his dad some some guy threatened me, and and, and it was a nightmare, man. You know the thing about that? The dad should have confronted you. Boys that are bullies are fucking pussies. That's the worst part. And I've seen that many times. If you go up to a boy, yeah, who's being a little vicious bully, and you say cut the shit, or you're sharp with them. They just turn into little babies. <laughs> they are the most fragile little fucking pussies. Really, all bullies are. That's what. Yeah, that's one thing. One thing that's great about the, being on the play yard and being with kids is you get you find out about people that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like you see little bullies and you see that energy, that aggressive energy, but you realize that right next to it is just a little fucking pissy pants. What makes that loser like, little fucking kid? What who, kind of parenting makes a bully? By the way. I have no idea. I don't know. You haven't I, seen enough of that? I don't know how it happens. Well, they just turn into fucking... Because I've seen it in, in school and stuff, and it, it goes through it goes through life. Yeah, it's not you know, it's, 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 not, it's, it's not economic. It's not... You have a 70-year-old fucking asshole bully. Mm -hmm. So it, it just it just oh. happens. Yep. A, a real good question coming in for Ann. Eric and Boss, I, I don't have time to go to the, the phone right now. Uh -huh. When did you realize you didn't want kids? Because And let me answer... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the question, I always knew I wanted kids. I was just in horrible relationships and knew I, I wasn't going to be stupid and, you know, have kids with someone I, I wasn't sure about. I don't know if my, my parents fucked me up about having kids because it was just, oh, God, it was just a nightmare being like a kid and, and all that fucking bullshit going on, the you, constant yelling. Well, you had a, you had a bad, you had a bad, oh, uh, it was awful. You had a bad family, right? Oh, it was terrible. Just yelling you know. constantly. Just, hey, son of a bitch. Fuck you, Joey. You fucking ass. Fuck you, Rose. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm just crying in the middle. Shut the fuck up. I'll give you something to cry about. Ah. It was just constant turmoil. And then me and my brother, just two kids trying to talk. And, you know, we had bunk beds. And we go to bed. We'd have our bedtime. It's like 730. And Joe's was like 8 or something like that. And, and then by 8 o'clock, he'd, he'd and we'd start talking. Hmm. And then I hear, I want to hear another word in there. It's like we couldn't talk. That's all you had was that little time to yes, talk. Yes, just to chat. And, and, and then he would come in, and, and my father would put his belt on the doorknob. And be like, don't make me use this. And and the glistening buckle oh swinging back God. and forth. I'm just looking like, oh, we can't talk. 
It's lights out, motherfucker. Well, so you had this bad, you have this bad association oh, with having a family. I horrible get it. And one. now you're in your own, like, this is like your whole life was defined by it because you yeah. now you have your own home. Yeah. You have fucking guns <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, porn at your fingertips. Right. A nice big air conditioned car. Oh, And you fantastic. don't want to fuck with that. Right. I totally get it. I don't want to I totally fuck get with it. it. But can I add this oh, to the, yeah. the equation? Yeah. You're really close with your family. I am very close with my family. But you're really yeah. close with your mom, your brother, and your sister. Yeah. You guys get together a right. lot. Yeah. Yeah, but who wants to make that investment all over again? I mean, it wasn't yeah. worth it, was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother and sister have kids. Mm -hmm. So it's like they got one, you know, one each, uh, not together. Yeah. Uh, that would be weird. Mm. But uh, I, I, like, I like when they come over, like yesterday, my brother, and uh, he brought little little Layla over. And, you know, they went in the pool and everything, and then she loves the water, and yeah. it's cute and as a button, leaves. and it's, it's great. great. And then, yeah, they pick up and go, and, and while they're there, I'm not like, fucking kids, <laughs> son of a bitch. Like, I'm making faces and googie faces and having fun. You get excited to see him? Uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. Like, I, I enjoy when the kids are around, but, but like, then I'll just have a debaucherous, uh, debaucherous party at mm -hmm. the house, and, you know, and, and thank God there are no kids around. Well, there are kids, but they're the ones you're fucking. Well, well that's this is how do you define kid? That is the true question. Let me get these kids out of here so I can bring those kids bring over. Bring the other kids over. Uh, let me go to Coke Logic from Chicago. Coke, uh, what's up, brother? Hey, uh, oh, he just took the call about the guy threatening the uh, the teenagers yeah. for uh, picking on his kid. Yeah. Uh, you kind of let it slide that you revealed earlier that uh, you, you you threatened a one year old. No, it wasn't a one. It was like it was a, a five four, year four or five old, probably. Oh, yeah. No, that guy. And, and I'm that, saying I was wrong, Coke Logic. I know I'm wrong, but I. I, I but if it's a 15 year old, fuck the 15 year old. I, I'm. I'll curse him out, no problem. You know what you find out too is that parents. Uh, you know, like the thing that it takes a village. I think it's actually, it's that it takes a village to keep to support each other, the parents. Right. It's not about helping the kids. Right. It's not about the kid learns how to weave from this one parent. <laughs> And then learns how to throw a pot in this other house. Mm -hmm. It's that when the mom wants to kill her fucking kid, <laughs> oh, she shit. the village comes over, gives her a shot of whiskey, and, <laughs> and tells her just don't, just take a breath. I know how you feel. Yes, he's an asshole. Your husband's a piece of shit, or whatever it is. So, <laughs> but that when when you're gonna have more moments like that, and every time it happens, someone a parent's gonna come up to you like that woman did. That's really the significant thing that happened mm -hmm. is that someone else came up and said, I told, look, that was inappropriate of you, and I give you license to have done it. Right. Because that kid's an asshole. Yeah, and he is an asshole. <laughs> Everyone's going to, you're going to fuck up over and over again. You shouldn't have done that, but you're going to, shouldn't have done that over and over again. A bunch again. of times. And other parents, uh, they're there for you. I've seen mm -hmm. that a few times, like a parent melts down loses it, and everybody else just sort of steps in, picks up the fucking shit the kid dropped. Yeah, and just helps, puts the parent back together, gets her through the line. That's I've weird... been in that role a million times, like in airport security. <laughs> Fucking parent traveling alone. Yeah. Stro trying to fold a stroller while some kid has no fucking sympathy for the 50 things she's doing. Right. And is wow. poking her. Or a, a, one thing a lot of kids will do because they're testing their parent is try to run through security. Or run in an area that they they know they're going to cause like a fucking international <laughs> shutdown. <laughs> yeah. So you'll do as a, as a parent who sympathizes. You'll just take the stroller from her and fold it for her, help her out. Yeah. Or grab the kid by the arm a little too hard when they try to run away. <laughs> I've done that a couple of times. I <laughs> goon on the kid. Yeah. Man, it's it's a uh, weird world. I don't. I, I, I don't had, know. I obviously had no fucking idea what I was getting into. Really That's strange. another thing. I think I would pro if I was a parent, I'd be the one that just buys the kid Everything. toys and throws it on the floor and just goes, "Here you go, fucking play with yourself." And I would just continue watching TV mm -hmm. or going in the pool and, <laughs> and let it be known there's a bunch drinking. Of, a bunch of people <laughs> applauding you for not having kids. So I, I, it runs the gamut here. I just don't think I'm gamut. cut out for not it. Everybody should have them, I, and you shouldn't have a kid. See, I have the means. <laughs> Please don't. And I, I know exactly. I have the means. I I think I I I wouldn't go crazy, but yeah. I just I really like where I am. And I don't want any monkey wrench thrown in there. 
hundred percent. I might regret it, you know, because people always say, "Well, you're going to regret it later in life." It's like, well, let's, no, you won't. What the fuck? You, you, you know, oh, I want to have a bunch of kids crying at my deathbed. No. Gives a shit. <laughs> you're fucking dying anyway. You're not going to be that much comfort. <laughs> yeah, at that point, yeah. it's just yeah. you know, you whatever. I live. was driving through the south once before satellite radio. When when you drove oh, around and the country, you had to change, the you had to actually take in the local the cultures. Yes. And drove, yeah. the local I was just asshole. listening to you guys, <laughs> yeah, and seventies hits from fucking coast to coast. <laughs> <laughs> I I listen to you know you get to like Missouri or Mississippi or wherever it is, and you go, I got one channel, and it's yeah, the fucking preacher, right? <laughs> and so I'm listening to this Christian radio. I think I was in Missouri. And uh, they had a show. It was late at night, a talk show, and they said we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about our our single friends. You know, we're all in families because we're God's children and because we're Christians. But what about your single friends? You love your single friends. They're part of your family. You know, some people they just end up single and they're not gonna change. They're not gonna have kids. How do we put make them part of the picture? It was actually a really interesting call. So the people start calling in. I we have a friend who's single and he's with us every Christmas. He's the we we treasure him. He's a big part of our lives. Then guys start calling in. I'm single. <laughs> yeah, of course. And I love the families that I'm part of. I'm the uncle, and I realize <laughs> yeah. in the South, single means gay. Means it's like gay. A, it's a polite. In the really Christian South, people that grew up gay, they just call you're single. Yeah, they because don't want, I know because you'd be <laughs> married because that's what you do. Yeah, if you're in that heavy religious uh, uh, area. And single would be gay. And they don't want to acknowledge that they're just That's gay. That's hilarious. They're not in a family. What about the close single people? people? Single. And they yeah. are. The, the story was really, what do you do with your gay friends? Yeah. You just I mean, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. But <laughs> we still, you know them and you love them. What do you do about it? Well, you have them over for Thanksgiving. You know, <laughs> I then, love being single. Then back to and allow exile. them to bring their friend over, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. no. He's got other friend. single friends. <laughs> his single friend. <laughs> he's bringing his friend over today. <laughs> his friend. His single friend, and he's <laughs> sucking his single. <laughs> that is one. a whole nother world uh, down yeah. south like that because, yeah, not. Not very tolerant no. of things like that. There are some southern gays who uh, end up here, yeah, or find a, a center of gayness to be part of. <laughs> yes. But then there's other ones who just stay in the South and they stay embedded in that culture. It's just odd that you're would... called single. They don't know, and at some point they start living with the guy, and they just that's John and Mark. They oh, live yeah, together. They're roomies. Yeah, yeah roomies. Yes, it is. <laughs> they're. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we we did a story years ago about those two guys that were old guys, Elmer and yeah, yeah, it was Elmer and some of, the, and they were celebrating like how long they had been together, and we because it was like sixty years or something. Elmer and Gus, Elmer and Gus, the longest, the yeah, they they had just been together for the forever. Oldest, the oldest gay couple in New York or yeah, something. Yeah, it was crazy. Some kind of distinction. But we had to think back that like it must have been so difficult, and they actually met during the war or some shit in the and, 40s and we're like thinking you know they come back and and they're profiled on some newsreel where it's like look at these two fellas ladies <laughs> they're here yeah. looking for they're fresh available. back from the war yeah. they're available <laughs> yes they live together you could uh, double date with a couple of these ladies look at this yes ele eligible bachelors <laughs> and like just completely not knowing they're just ass fucking every night and loving it, well, I think saving they... money on the water bill <laughs> by showering together. <laughs> Very economical. Stuff they must have learned in the military. Yes. <laughs> they bought a nice little house together in Levittown. He puts his penis in his anus. <laughs> in the 40s. Yes. Come on, girls. <laughs> uh, it must have been rough back then. Wow. Well, I met a guy who was like 95 upstate, and he, uh, when Single. my ex and I had <laughs> lived up there, and he told us his life story. And part of it was. Must have taken a while. Well, at some point. <laughs> at some That's point. A long weekend. <laughs> he told us, uh, at some point he got to a part where he moved in with his brother in law. He said, and then my brother in law moved in together, and then me and he, my brother in law got this new house. Like, he lived. 
with and I I think mm-hmm. brother in law was a code thing back. Who like lives single. with their brother in law? Yeah. Oh, live with their brother in law. <laughs> what does that make any what sense? That? <laughs> Your sister's husband? Yeah, you really. Live with just the two of you? Yeah. Where's the sister? There's no. It's just brother. My brother in law and brother I live together. Brother in law. That was a. I think that was a code. He was basically word telling you one time. Back in the day, Must did you know he was gay? What? Did you know he was I don't gay? Think, I think that guy would never have in a million years said out loud, I'm Fessed gay. Fessed up to it. But... He lived with his brother-in-law. They probably shared 50 years of life together. <laughs> oh, wow. But pretty much every drop drop of come into one another <laughs> yeah. for all that time. But if you said, are you gay? He'd be like, what are you talking, <laughs> talking about? <laughs> what kind of thing is that to say? say yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother-in-law, that is an odd thing. Uh-huh. I guess, uh, yeah, over the years, it's had to have been different terms. I mean, gay was... Was happy and mm-hmm. gay before well, it became gay. What Queer was well, just something a little you, odd. You wouldn't identify something like that. No. It's just something that happened, I think. Yeah. Because even that in, in old movies, you hear it's like, wow, that situation's a bit queer. Yeah. You know? And, 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 yeah, and then queer twice became, mm-hmm. hey, I think he's queer. Mm-hmm. It's the first yeah, guy that used that one. Must have gotten a good laugh, though. Yeah. Yeah. See those two guys? I think they're queer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they just call them that's, queer. That's, that's, a a great way, that's a great way to put it. They are. <laughs> that's hilarious. They Let's are Let's start queer. using that. And then if someone else hears it. It's like, wait a minute. My friend, I think he made that up. Spreads like wildfire. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, Louie, what a great hour, man. Uh, I think most people enjoy this. I'm sure. You know, oh, whatever. please. Of course. But in general, I think it was a great I'm hour and a half. Stupid guy from Allentown didn't like it. Why don't we take a break? Go play with your iron coke and chromium steel. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about other stuff. Clank. People Clank. Want, people <laughs> want to talk about last night's uh, Louis episode. I haven't seen it, but fuck it. Ah, I mean, spoilers. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's okay. Right. It's fine. We should talk about because uh, uh, <laughs> sure. a bunch of people really want to. Uh, you promoting anything else, Lou? No, I mean, just the show's on every Thursday. I know. Um, doing real well. 1030. Are you doing less uh, road stuff? And well, uh, well, I guess I got, what do I have in August? The first week of August, uh, I'm in Cohasset. Massachusetts and Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, mm-hmm. and uh, Newport, Rhode Island. First mm. week of August and Hyannis. I'm doing all these like tents and places. That's oh, shit. So I'm doing don't know. a spray of summer gigs. Like the Enormo Dome yeah. somewhere. I... Yeah. No, none of them are. They're just <laughs> no. the little places. But they are cool. doing those uh, first week of August. Nice. In New England. But, uh, but no, I do the road for like the fall. The show comes back when it comes if it comes back again in June. Yeah, I think we'll, so, get shot at we'll probably get a third season. Yeah, of course you will. Yeah. Something weird would have to happen. But you know, I mean, Rupert Murdoch is going to be the <laughs> show. <laughs> I work uh, for him. No, you you work for him. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I can uh, mess up a lot of things. Uh, yes. That's great. I always yeah. think that way that something because that's happened to me. I mean, yeah, yeah. HBO used to be a place I could order gigs from, like a restaurant. They just do anything I wanted. to. And then the guy who was running it fucking slapped a woman in front of a camera in Vegas. <laughs> and that was, was the uh, end of it. That was the end of it. I called HBO. They're like, who? Uh, and that was, it was all uh, hinging on this one fucking dude. It really is. For all the benefits you get yeah. from being in a certain business, you know, uh, the, you're you're by the by by the tips of your yeah. fingernails. Yep. You're hanging on with no security whatsoever that this will continue past. No, you got to be ready to minute. go. Yeah, you got to be ready to transition. All when, the time. when my agent calls, I'm just thinking, all right, what happened? Let me start thinking. What am I going to do? Yeah. What am I going to do? Yeah. This could be you don't have a job anymore. Yeah. So I don't believe in yeah. that. I mean, Jesus, you guys are in a volatile oh, place. Stupid. I, all this shit. Could, all these companies could, you know. Yeah. They just merge, fold. Uh, you become redundant. And uh, no, I remember when we used to work. Uh, when I used to work just comedy clubs, uh, and there'd be one nighters, like places that would start becoming a comedy room. And the thing that we always, I used to tell the comedians when they'd be like complaining, they're not paying us enough, or that guy's a, the owner's a dick. I'm like, you don't understand. He could t- clear the tables and chairs, turn the radio up real loud, and make 50 times the money. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking, just to lower the lights and turn up the music. All right. And just pour drinks into people's mouths, <laughs> and he'll make a fortune. And we're making them sit at tables and be quiet. Yeah. This is not, It's not a good economic He doesn't model. need you. No. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, also, just, Louis C.K. on Twitter. So uh, we'll break. We'll get into some other things next. Okay. Do we have you for a while, though? Yeah, whatever you want. Nice. We like that. All right. All right. Virus, Sirius XM. You're listening to Obi and Anthony. Anthony. 
That's pretty funny. We got Louis C.K. in studio. Want to remind people that Louis, uh, the complete first season, is now available on DVD and Blu-ray. Yes. Yeah. When did that come out? A couple days ago? Uh, no, twenty June. Oh, it's been out a while. Oh, all right. Yeah, Roland just want to remind people that they you can buy the can season. pick that up, and of yeah. course, season two is happening as we speak. There was a new episode last night. It's on a little late for us morning guys. Yes. Us morning radio yes, guys. So thank God for DVR. Yes. So I'll watch it today. I can't wait. Do people with that have shows get kind of pissed off at DVRs? I don't know that. You know, I'm not sure I understand. A DVR I, is like a VCR. It just records it. It records the so programming. It, it, it tunes yeah. your station. Mm -hmm. It tunes your tuner to that station. Yeah, it, and it, then it, it records and whatever. And it records it, but it's like you were watching it. Yeah, I, I would assume that ratings-wise, it has to acknowledge that. Well, it's, yeah, I'm not it's like, and also watched. the ratings only come from Nielsen families, I think. Yeah, so, that archaic. so none of that. But and I think I, matters. That, I think to answer your question, it was a transitional period where it did matter, where people were like, "Fuck, people are DVR and then we're not getting accurate ratings." But now I think. In his world, they're living in the world where they understand that whole. Yeah, they give the you the DVR now. numbers are a separate number, and there's also encore numbers. There's right. cumulative numbers, and also they don't. They, you know, they want people to watch the advertising, but right they, but overall, they want the show to become a hit and have a lot of watching. So in the early runnings, they just want people to sample it. That's the big thing. They don't care where they see it. Uh huh. They want folks to sample it. The more eyeballs see the show. The, 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 then the better ratio you have of like reject, you know, you're going to get like whatever. On my show, uh, probably out of every 10 people that see it, three people are going to want to watch it because it's pretty oh, disgusting. Jesus. What the fuck? I have a pretty narrow audience. <laughs> wow. Because I curse on the show. Yeah. And I cover some pretty, you know, un, 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 unhappy ground. People aren't really, <laughs> most people aren't going to like it. So they want, you know, 10 million people to check it out mm -hmm. so they can have the 3 million who will stick that around. Will stay around. Yeah, exactly. Watch it on a regular basis. It means basis. there's 7 million people around who, like, hate you. So there's that. <laughs> That's fucked up. There's that, too. And the, I think with the, the DVRing, though, it takes away from the competition aspect. Like, you, you'd have networks battling it out who's going to, you know, which show is going to win Thursday night. But now you can watch both shows. You can watch three fucking shows that are all on at the same time mm -hmm. a and watch them at various times. Yeah. So you're not really getting any one show that's the big hit that's going to demand more advertising dollars because it's beating two other shows. You well, know? and what people at first they said, well, the DVR show loses because <laughs> right. folks can speed through the ads. Uh, but again, more people are checking it out, mm -hmm. and after a while, that the DVR show might start winning and get watched live more. Right. If people like a show enough, they'll want to see it as soon as they can. To uh -huh. me, that's the, the the goal is to have people so compelled by the show that they're like, I'm I'm going to be sitting there at ten thirty on Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Because I like the show that much, rather than ah, it's on my DVR. I'll see. That's it how. Yeah. There there are there are a few shows like that. There There's are very very few. few. I, um, I think it's a big schedule thing, uh, scheduling thing too. We used to just have to, you had to watch it when it was on, yeah, or you didn't see it. That's well, how then shit works. Also, <laughs> then there's ways like through the fucking the internet and through promotion mm -hmm. that more people that are likely to like the show will end up sampling it, and critics <laughs> likely <laughs> to like. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> that's when shit like that's the only reason I give a shit about critics or the the awards. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy that we got nominated in Four. our first oh, year, yeah, yeah. four Emmys for Louis in general, because uh, because the show will get. More people will see it. That's I want FX to get paid back for uh, having given me the show. I don't care. Like I literally will get no j joy <laughs> from owning these fucking statues. I don't give you a know, shit. Put them up on the, the mantle, like yeah. Lucy and Desi. I have had those. one from Come when on. I was on Chris Rock's show. And right, it just sits there and it's weird. Where is it again? <laughs> it's I think weird. Told us years it's ago. on my mantle now. I've got a ma I didn't okay. have one before. <laughs> okay. You need a mantle. Yeah, I have a mantle. Once you have it, but, I mean, uh, you need the a reason mantle. those are important to me is cuz the show I want FX gave me the show. The show to me is the, I it's the greatest thing in the world this show to yeah. me. Yeah. Uh but I want them to be told by establishment that it was a good idea. Mm -hmm. So that they yeah, let yeah, me keep yeah. doing it. And that they believed in you. Yeah, and then other shows will get to be done with the same. Right. Somebody needs to, because this guy spent, we also, me and the network together, we spend 
like a hundredth, literally, of the money that NBC does. Wow. And mm-hmm. we got, and we're nominated alongside with their shows. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, it cost us less. That's good. I got, you know? I, I got to ask you. So the Joan Rivers show is terrific. The sh- uh, all the shows so far this season have been terrific. The homeless guy. Is that yeah. based on anything? The one that gets uh, the guy that got slammed <laughs> by the truck. Yeah. No. Uh, well, I've had pe- moments where you sort of get noticed by a homeless guy, like you get locked in on. <laughs> yeah. Um, nothing like that ever happened, but I just got this idea in my head: what if there was a really well filmed, like a really fucking horrible <laughs> it moment? Was horrific. <laughs> yeah, the redhead gets ripped off. And uh, what would your the rest of your day be like? That, to me, that was fascinating. <laughs> And the reason his head comes off, that was a conscious decision because I wanted it to be clear that there's nothing that I could do. Right, right, right. I'm sort of part of what happened. I kind of got this guy killed. But there's no mouth-to-mouth. There's no No, there's no no sticking around with my eyebrows knit. Look, oh, is he all right? Is he going to be okay? His head came (laughs) off his body. That means just walk walk away. I'm not going to hang around and look at his fucking head. But you saw it. It's not even and appropriate right, to hang around. Yeah. And, and, and your whole day was But you're not going to cancel. Who are you going to call people? I can't. I just saw a guy's head come off. But that's so why. I have to, that well, was, are you going to be okay tomorrow? But that's or? the shit no one sees on a show or, or on an idea. What would happen yes. right after that? And you just go about your day, but your day becomes very fucked up. Yes, it does. Because you saw that's why it's so br- it's brilliant. I don't have to tell you, but I love it. It's, it's absolutely brilliant because you have no real connection to that guy. If no, it, if it was someone yeah. you knew, of course your whole day would stop. Yes, but it was I was just involved enough that it fucked with me. Right, but, but not did. involved enough to like call this woman and say, "Listen, I'm not going to go out with you because." I yeah. just saw this happen. So guy's head come off. But all the the idea, this the reason the show I love doing the show is because um, that's only half the episode, and it, the idea didn't merit a whole story. Mm-hmm. If I was on a sitcom, I'd have to be like, well, then we have to meet the mother of the homeless guy. <laughs> we have to yeah. find out why you told this story. I, I it was interesting for one more scene, uh-huh. and then fuck it it's over yeah right move Go on to me on stage second story for the yeah, second yeah half. right uh so i want to talk about last night's episode yeah. uh where are we oh, okay <laughs> let me say hi to jimmy in jersey jimmy hey guys hey. guys it's uh big big fan louie last night's show had me laughing so much i woke everybody up in the house the scene with you and the girls in the car singing the song had me hysterically laughing. <laughs> Thanks, it was man. the funniest thing, man. I got it. I got it. Do you do it? Because it's so relatable to me. I'm that total tool at the red light singing like a dummy with my kid in the backseat. Do you do that with the girls? All the, you know, the, yeah, that's where that came from. I was in, with my girls and I was started and uh, Who Are You came on. And I cranked it up and started singing it. And I wasn't having a good day with the kids. We weren't getting along much. And I just turned it way up. And they just looked at me with their crabby faces like, what is this? And I just <laughs> sing, who the fuck are you? And I got really into it. And it was so cathartic. I did. I just sang the whole song. And so I called my producer and said, can we get the rights to the who are you? And it took us about like six months to get it, but we got it. Wow. We're pretty cheap. It ended up, we had to send it the script to Pete Townsend and send him the DVD of the show. Right. Wow. And he personally approved. I mean, he brought the price down. It was like $150,000. Holy wow. shit. And so he watched it. It took all, it took a whole half a year to get it through that system. Damn. And then he wrote back and said, you can have it for 7000 Wow. Yeah. Damn, that is just nothing. From- yeah. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, it's the whole song. I mean, we ended up editing it, but what we got rights to is the entire song. <laughs> wow. Why? Sometimes you could get rights for what thirty seconds or yeah, something. Yeah, well, they'll they'll make less. They'll charge you less if you're only using like a sting from the song or a little bit. Oh, I didn't know. But that. we wanted the entire song. Right. But once I cut it together, I'm like, I can't make people listen to this. <laughs> it's a great song, but the whole song. Yeah. yeah. I can't yeah. wait to watch it now. Uh, Matt in Canada. Matt. Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey, man. Um, Louis, I was watching, I'm up in a Callaway, and your show is like the only highlight of my week, because it's like <laughs> I'm as far north in Canada as you can get working for the summer. And it was weird, the Blueberries episode, I was watching, and, 
I got turned on by you and the girl, more the girl Oof. than anything, but it was one of the weirder things I've ever had in my entire life because I never thought of you as sort of a sexual <laughs> arousing person. And I was so, and I, my girlfriend and I are up here and she wanted to have sex after the episode because I think it turned her on too, but I really wasn't in the mood. So it was, oh my it was God. Honestly, Louie, one of the fucking weirdest things I've had but, in my entire life. But you were turned on by Louie? No, it was just the, the situation. Just the, okay. the whole situation. Yeah. Well, it, 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 I guess it could it could be like a fantasy thing where it's not so much Louie and that girl. Well, but, it's like when but, you watch porn. Yeah. If there wasn't, if the guy's cock wasn't in it, it wouldn't be arousing. But yeah. so in a way, you're getting turned on by a guy's cock. Yeah, you, you need like <laughs> you're watching a guy's. If she was just sucking a, you know, like whenever they do porn with dildos, dildos nothing. No, it doesn't work. Nothing. Because you're kind of living vicariously you're living through vicarious. the, the movie. You're not going. Wow, yeah. that's great that there's cock yeah. in here. Thank God but, they have cock but here. But it's like, yeah, exactly. I would love that done to my cock. Yes. That would be. Well, that definitely, you if do. you have a girlfriend, I could see. I mean, because that episode is just about two grown ups saying, we're going to have sexual intercourse now. Yes. And going through the motions very deliberately. And the kicker, so the, and the kicker in that. that one is yeah. hilarious. I mean, I I didn't I did not see that coming. When she starts uh, crying, you it's mean? Yeah. hilarious. It's, it's brilliant. Because it comes out of nowhere. Point. You're just like, wait, what the what the fuck just happened? And, they, <laughs> and you're just like, what you know, it's fuck? that wasn't even supposed to be. Uh, I'd written the story about this woman who's like <laughs> trying to make a guy into a husband, like automatically. Yeah, yeah. Like talking while she's putting cream on and sending you out for shit. <laughs> um, and I didn't know where it was going. And I, Pamela Adlon, who she's a producer on the show also, she, that's the only, the only episode that I ever gave any credit, writing credit to anybody else. She has story by credit mm -hmm. because we kind of came up with that together. And then her idea was we had had this loose idea about a woman being spanked uh, sexually and then breaking down into <laughs> tears. <laughs> And that was her idea. And so she said, what about it? What if this woman is that? So I wrote a version with it. But after and then I sent it to my producer and then I thought that's not a good that I wrote a different ending. But that the woman who did it, she's the only one who auditioned who cried because she got the wrong script. Oh, so I was shit. watching her audition and she starts doing this daddy daddy. And I was like, oh, fuck. Nobody was supposed to get that. Like I was a little <laughs> embarrassed. Oh, shit. But she was so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Maria Dietze, her name was. Mm. It was great. So because she ended up making me want to put it back. She she's saying that. And, and I think what I picked up from your character was you were getting a little weirded out by it. Yeah. But. Going through the motions, <laughs> and then it just took the next step of weirdness when she starts crying. It's yes. like, what the fuck do I do now? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just in a great. person's bad place. And then it turned out to be sort of feel like the blueberries were. She knew she'd need them because yeah, yeah. Once she, I think she knew all this shit was gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> she brings the guy home, makes him uncomfortable, has him spank her, cries. And then blueberries and whipped cream should have to have the blueberries and whipped cream. To yeah, it's yeah. great. <laughs> there are those people who uh, who take you through their fucking when you're single. That the, yeah. what, the, when you when you were sex single a second time after divorce, you have realized that you that thing you always wanted to get some pussy. And it turns out it's a really intimate thing. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. really like this is a fucking human being and they're a stranger. And I'm naked next to them <laughs> in their fucking bedroom. Ugh. 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 <laughs> you realize gross. it's way more involved. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. When you're 20, oh, 21, yeah, who gives like, a fuck? You know, right. yeah. Oh, man, that is, that is fucking good. Yes, yeah, so this when, was when, that. When I, when I look at a show like uh, Seinfeld, and it was called Seinfeld, and it was Jerry yeah. Seinfeld in the show, yeah. uh, it, but that wasn't Jerry. That no. was, there was a part of Jerry, but it was, it, from what I've that heard, Larry, really. it's more it Larry. It's more Larry. Yeah, uh, it was obviously, his life. it's right. his life. Now, when you say that, like you, you got uh, nominated for acting, yeah, how much of the character is really you, and how much acting are you doing? Uh, in, well, I'm not character acting. I mean, I think that's I don't know much about acting academically, <laughs> but. Uh, 
even though I've just been nominated. It's one of the best. That's why I love it. Best actors in the entire country. Uh, No, nominated for an Emmy. Yeah, for his acting. I don't know much about it. I don't know much about it. Well, because character acting is where you create a whole person. Right. But I'm not doing that. I mean, uh, then there's acting where you're just being in the situation, and none of these things have happened to me, and none of them are really happening on the show. Uh, it's all fiction. But I would right. assume it's an exaggerated version yeah, of I don't, your personality. I don't act this way in life at all. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's actually really fun that way that I put myself, I make myself make really big mistakes. And it's also how I get to do things that are um, controversial or sticky, is that I make myself the big idiot. Right. I, I make mistakes and... Uh, and I look stupid, <laughs> and that allows me to have some fucked up things happen. Yeah, yeah. You know, like Nick DePaulo and I had the episode where we got in a fight politically, uh-huh. and the thing that was important to me was that I sound like a bigger idiot than he does because I am li- tend to be liberal and he tends to be conservative. Mm-hmm. So I wrote him a really good argument, and I wrote, and I just, you're a Nazi. I just made myself into an asshole on purpose. <laughs> Because then I'm not preaching and I'm not trying to take it. That I get to have a really in, interesting political with, discussion with, without it coming off like uh, I'm trying to what tell kind people of agenda something. is. But yeah, I think, yeah. He's, he's so I push. come off like a dick, right? But I think that's pretty brave to do. I think other people would use that power to go. No, I am liberal in my real life, and I got this. <laughs> but outlet. no one's going to listen. No one's going to hear it's it. It's brave no. though. But I think a lot of people do as... it the other way. They do, and then they fail. They, That's then, what I'm saying. Nobody wants to see it, exactly. but I get uh, to do this. There's an Fuck episode, uh, not the next, but the one after, where there's a guy on who I have a really big conflict with. It's I can't tell you about it until no you problem. see it. But uh, the w- way I got this person to be on the show and I got this fucked up thing to happen, it's really weird, was that I made my, I wrote myself wrong. Like I made me wrong. Oh, really? <laughs> and I made him right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and it was well worth it because I got yeah. to have this explosive moment. Anyway, uh, else? Uh, there's a. Let me uh, let me go to uh, Kevin in Connecticut. There's a good one too. Is it the Kevin from Connecticut? Yeah. Good morning, guys. Oh, hey, buddy. He's a regular. Yeah. Hi, Squeezy. Hey. Squeezy. Just, uh, Easy. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hey, Louis. The one thing that I, that I noticed that you do really well is just create uncomfortability, whether it's for yourself <laughs> or for for, for 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 like your aunt. Yeah. Your racist aunt. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she gives us a a plate of uh, Brazil nuts, and she says, "Would you, oh, would yes. you like a nigger toe?" <laughs> right? Yes, that was. But that's what they were called that's growing what up. They were called. Uh, yeah. Can, were called. can I ask? I didn't get. To, I didn't see the episode. Unfortunately, FX uh, was beyond cool with that, huh? Yeah, they didn't. Well, there was a. Um, I got a request to cut. Uh, she says, actually, she says nigger toe. Three times. <laughs> and then I say the same word in my stand up later in the episode. And she asked me to cut a few out. But I pushed back and I got more in than she asked for. Yeah. But we, One more we, thing, Louis, please. Yeah. Oh. Last year, uh, I noticed a lot that you put the word AIDS yeah. in a lot of episodes. That, <laughs> that was intentional, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, there's a few places like I'm on the subway and it says AIDS on the window. <laughs> And then there was a, we're in a Catholic school and it says AIDS on the blackboard. Like every, every, every word was small except the word AIDS. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's a really <laughs> obnoxious thing yeah. and because it's my show. I have full control of this world. So it's just like, yeah, I want Yeah, we're shooting on the subway that's our dedicated subway train. And, uh, and I felt like the window was too clean. So I said, just give me a, give me a marker. And I just wrote AIDS <laughs> on the window in front of me. What do you mean they gave you a, a dedicated subway train? Well, we had a sub, we, that one we shot on, uh, the Randall Island where the firemen practice mm-hmm. getting people out of a burning subway. Right. It used to be you could shoot on that subway train, but oh, it didn't shit. move. You had to like have 10 grips on the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, rocking it. So it looked like it was moving. It was kind of <laughs> shitty, but. They don't let you use it anymore. So this year we shot a subway scene that's on next week, and we actually took control of a train. Oh, wow. We had the shuttle train that goes from Grand Central to uh, 8th Avenue or whatever. It has, has It's a one-stop train. And wow. What is so they shut train? it down for the night, and then we go back and forth and back and forth. What kind of – like, who do you ask – he has to have that it's fucking pain in the ass. <laughs> That's got to be. You have to have sit-down meetings with the transit cops yeah. and the 
uh, a transit authority has to approve it. You have to send them the script. They have to approve the script. And we there was one thing I wanted to do. It's a whole episode where I'm just observing things on the subway. And there's one thing I wanted desperately, and they wouldn't let me have it. Uh-huh. Uh, this scene where there's a guy with a briefcase eating an ice cream cone, and the napkin from his ice cream floats off out of his hand and down into the tracks. Right. And so he just climbs down into the tracks <laughs> and gets the napkin and climbs out. Kind of not so long before a train, co- then a train comes. <laughs> and I had it in my head. I was like, I just want to see that moment. And then you just see me go, what the fuck? Like it was a little, it's a subtle thing. Right, right. But I wanted it so bad. And they told us that it would cost us $28,000 because he had to go to track school. We had to send a guy through track Holy school for two shit. months. What the fuck? What's track fuck? school? Track school is how you learn to be down on the tracks and, and not, not die. hurt yourself. <laughs> and they'd have to shut the third rail down for like two sections. And they said we could do it, but it would cost twenty eight grand wow. i almost did i almost said fuck it i'm i want it i want that shot yeah but it was fiscally irresponsible, <laughs> irresponsible yeah. at the beginning of every season i tell my production crew here are the big things i want and so, they start working on so they start working the subway was the last thing we shot it took all fucking season wow. to negotiate the day wow. on the subway and it took all season to get the Pete Townsend thing. And then we shot this thing that takes place in, in Afghanistan. And we have helicopters, this whole crazy uh, sequence. That took a, a year. That, uh, that before, I mean, as soon as I got renewed, oh, I said, I, I, go get uh, go get Afghanistan. And we we got the army involved. This is crazy <laughs> thing. That, this is insanity. Awesome. That episode's going to be sick. And we also got uh, FX to give us double budget for that one episode. Wow. And um, that took... You know, months to get approved by them. Month, but if you stay, if you just take the time, uh-huh. you can do shit like that. I got the, you, you need the right people though, too. You can't yeah. just send some dick to go. No, you have to. Have so really... I need to get this done. Who do I? Yes. Uh... Well, he has FX behind him a little bit. That helps. Well, because people, helps. Be, not really, because no. we we act alone. We don't. They don't even know what we're doing. They yeah. don't know what the show's <laughs> about. Best, oh, that's the, true. The best way. You said that a few times. The, Damn, the, the Afghanistan script is the only one I ever gave them ahead of time because I wanted to. I said I want double the money for one episode, and they're like, "Well, you got to let us read it at least." No. So I gave them the <laughs> script, and uh, you know, but everybody tries to tell you you can't do. It. You're going to need the army, and they won't do it. But pick up the fucking phone and call the Pentagon. That's what we did. <laughs> Jesus. And said, "Hi, we have a TV show, and we'd like your cooperation." And they're like, "Huh." Call back tomorrow. They they six calls. They just f- say fuck you. Yeah, so, yeah. And at some point they go, this guy's not going away. Okay, <laughs> you should talk to John. Wow. Or whatever. And it took us all year, but we shot that fucking episode. It's like uh, Apocalypse Now. It's beautiful. Holy oh, shit! It's it. sick. It's great. Uh, it's gonna be an hour. It's an hour long. That's episode. amazing. Anything else, Kevin? Uh, I just wanted to say I love the show. Thanks, uh, man. I think I'm Opie and Anthony. Yeah. Ah, no. ah you are. Oh, yeah. Hey, Louis, uh, yeah. during the break, was telling us about the apartment they use in the show. Yeah. And actually, he still has it. It's a real apartment. Yeah, we kept it because uh, we don't want to lose the location. It's a real apartment, and we're not in a studio. Um, but it's my apartment. They gave me the keys because it's my company. So once we shut down the company for the year... Um, they said, here's the keys to the apartment, by the way. <laughs> so I so, this apartment. So you got your TV apartment. Yes. I, I still, and when I'm getting my kitchen redone, I think later this year, and I'm going to move my kids into that. We're going to live. TV apartment. Yeah. In my fictional <laughs> how does, apartment. How do you deal like with three the, months with a building as far as lighting and, and... Uh, they're great. Well, we don't fuck with people much. We're behind yeah. the door. There's one neighbor to our apartment who hates us. Really? Yeah. And he'll like stand right outside the door and talk on his cell phone loud and he'll do passive aggressive but, shit. But who, hates would, us. who would hate having like a TV show film right next to A lot of New Yorkers just that. as soon as they see a light stand, they're like, oh, gosh. why shouldn't have to deal with that? They just think, yeah, that's yeah, a real hassle. Yeah. yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Thank you. We'll have real problems. I think it's cool as hell when but, I see those. Yeah, uh, me too. I always want to. When there's cooperate. a set. Yeah. yeah. There's a uh, yeah, because I would assume. Uh, w- well, you did did a hallway shot there with the um, where you're bringing your uh, your sister out. Yeah, we were screaming and yelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why he hates us. It's so probably it's a little been, justified. That must have been one yeah. where. Oh, when the neighbors helped the yeah, guy who's fucking howling. And yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. That's a great it was episode. like eight o'clock at night. It was probably not fun for him. With yeah. the guy who was living with his brother-in-law. Yes, that was, that was great. It's like you're, the the whole confusion of whether you should just leave this stranger with yeah. your kids and she's got to go to the hospital and yeah, because I don't I don't really want to talk to any strangers. So, right, right. But I had had to do it. 
Yeah. yeah, he's the guy. He was in a play with Chris Rock called Motherfucker with a Hat. Mm-hmm. And I saw the play, and he was amazing. So I wrote it. I, he, he, he made me write the episode. Wow. I can't wait to see that play. We're, we're, it's really good. I know. We could go any time. I'm just trying to find, you know, a babysitter. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> that, there you go. Back to your point. Ed. Yeah. That's something I would love to do, and I just got to figure oh, it out. Oh, well. Uh, Matt in Boston. What's up, buddy? Oh, dude. Louie, love the friggin' show. It's amazing. Thanks. That episode where you spanking that chick, I went from laughing my ass off to completely pissed because I'm like, why are you dealing with this whore? Get the fuck out. <laughs> I spanked her and I got half a rod watching it with my wife. Wow. Hey, this is all right. Who knew this was such a turn on? <laughs> yeah. And then where did it go? That's an. <laughs> she starts fucking crying. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me because you ruined my night right away. <laughs> And then she's eating the blueberries, and I'm just like, holy shit. I'm like, what just happened there? I just I just got emotionally raped by Louis C.K. That's good. <laughs> emotionally raped, But why yeah. can't you continue That's to be turned good. on when she's crying? Why not? You have to be a different kind of person. <laughs> All right, I'm a different kind of person. Yeah. I, I think I touched on right. Sure. But I think you get different reactions from that scene, obviously. No, that's from great. People. But that's the perfect reaction. I, I always, I never want people to expect anything and yeah that's what to me i want people to be going what the fuck or because the show's not always like ha ha funny mm-hmm. but if it's not being funny it has to be very something yeah yeah it has to have a big spike it has to make you go like, uh, like there's some moments where you're just like oh oh my god well, what's the fuck that's horrible <laughs> <laughs> yes to me that's as good as a laugh yeah if people are yes. horrified or very curious or uh, startled Mm-hmm. Um, that's as good yeah. as a laugh. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, just a high octane uh, moment when the head flies off. What the fuck? Like yeah. you said earlier, and that I, that looks so real. That didn't look like <laughs> a dummy hilarious. head. We got that. That was a four thousand dollar head. That head. Wow. And we negotiated it down. They that knew that. Another take they knew they had. Right. Yeah. They knew they had a good head. They're yeah. like, our head is great, and you're gonna pay for well, it. Well, we had it made for us. We had it made right. after the guy. That costs a shitload of money to get what? the cast done and get the head made and painted. And is there someone that really specializes good. in that shit? Well, yeah, this is, it's a competitive field, so that's why we were able to get really? the price down. Yeah, because really? there was a place that wanted sixteen thousand for the head, <laughs> and then this guy said, a new guy said, I could do it for four grand, and it's really good material. Do that head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that we had we shut down an intersection. We had a crane holding up because uh, it's a composite shot. When mm-hmm. You shoot a plate, and then you. Mm-hmm. We had a crane holding a dummy up, like a like a you know um, like a marionette. Yeah, and we hit it with this garbage truck, and <laughs> the fucking dummy got in the. Uh, it uh, pierced the gas tank, and we spilled diesel fuel all over Holy Tenth shit, Avenue. Holy shit! That'll cost <laughs> a couple of nightmare. Months too. That that was the hardest thing we did. Is that one of those season was that wow. uh, hitting killing that bum? Is that one of those <laughs> shots too? You got to get it right the first time, or you didn't well, have we any had, more? You get a really pristine dummy for the first take, and then after that, you're getting a less and less. You get a one arm dummy after a while. <laughs> but what about the head itself? I the mean, head we saved. Um, I mean, we rolled it down the street a few times. If you look at it, there's about thirty shots in the sequence. Um, but we rolled it down the street, which it survived fine. <laughs> yeah. But then finally we propped the head up on the, the, the good head on the dummy and came and I, and I had the camera, I was running the camera <laughs> and I was like looking right at the garbage truck and the dummy's right between me and the garbage truck. And this garbage truck gets fucking blue smoke behind it. Like it was <laughs> like a bull coming at me. And it was always, it was one of those moments where I realized <laughs> I, I'm in fucking danger yeah, right yeah. now. Like, he's basically hitting a missile that's going to come at me. And we let him hit the fucking head in the dummy head on, straight on. Mm-hmm. And it was beautiful. <laughs> and the truck stopped about an inch from the camera. Wow. wow. Yeah. And uh, it was... I wasn't scared, though. I was excited because I was getting the shot. Yeah. yeah. If you're getting, you're getting footage, you don't feel fear. You just get excited. <laughs> right on. You got to watch that again now just to see that, uh, that part. Yeah, that was a lot. That, that was two shot. days. Yeah. Two different days. Two days. Two different intersections, too. They don't match because we got kicked out. Oh, wow. We caused so much problems at 10th <laughs> Avenue and 28th Street that we couldn't get re-permitted <laughs> to shoot the second half of the scene. So we had to go up to 38th or somewhere. So Holy if you look at it carefully, shit. it 
shot to shot, it keeps shifting which intersection it is. And we and got no one some no- of the extras back, but not all of them. So some of the people. <laughs> and no one noticed. No. I no, love I that shit. I, I, love, I love trying to pick out films. Yeah, off. me too. I love that. If you watch car chases, you can usually, you know where the car is going to go because he's following his own. Uh, rubber on the yeah, road. Yeah, yeah, the tires. They've tracks. already done it a bunch of times. Uh, any, so they start. Any Hal Needham movie was always uh, bad. Those Burt Reynolds movies yes. where the, the cops are chasing him and you see the skid marks going around <laughs> yeah, the corner yeah. before they get there. They're not cleaning the fucking yeah, roads. Clean it up. They, back I, then they couldn't, uh, you know, I, composite it no. out. Or, I used to get all the books, the film club books, and there'd be old mm-hmm. westerns where you see where planes yes. did fly by because yep. the trails and stuff. You're like, wait a minute, there were no mm-hmm. planes when this movie was supposed to take place. Mm-hmm. I I love all that no, shit. No, me too. Didn't you say uh, that you had to switch out one of your daughters and no one noticed? Yeah, the first season, there's two kids within one episode. <laughs> I <laughs> never two noticed. Different kids playing Jane. The little were you one. were you scared that oh fuck people are so going to notice this? I kind of didn't give a shit because <laughs> the show doesn't hinge on that. Yeah, Everybody's yeah, yeah. like, I can't wait to see that girl. They're just like, what happens in this story? Right. Whatever it That's is. That's what I've tried to train the audience to. Don't worry about. But how did the no one continuity. notice? <laughs> Nobody did. The net, I thought I was worried the network would get mad because they, when we started, they said they wanted to make all of our talent deals and they wanted me to have responsible series deals where you lock an actor down uh-huh. for a year. But I don't know that I'm ever going to use anybody more than once. Yeah. So I, I they they get paid when they work. That's uh, all my actors have no I have no hold on these people. I love that you don't feel like you have to use someone more than once. Yeah, it's, no, it's. I love that the shows. The way shows are built, it's backwards. They they get they decide before they even shoot anything. These seven people are all going to be really interesting. Yeah, and they pay them all for a year of television. Then they're forced to use them every show, and if they stop being interesting, they still have to be in. They have to be in it because they're locked in. Yeah, instead of going, let's get a yeah. bunch of rookies and see who plays their way on the squad. Mm-hmm. If somebody stays interesting, you use them. If they don't, you just let them fucking die. Who yeah. Gives, who gives a shit? <laughs> like our pal Bob Kelly was your brother. And yeah, you're not even using him yet. in the second season. And it had nothing to do with Bobby. He did a Bobby great job so season good. one. He was great. He was so good. I just didn't have any ideas for season so two. So you said, all right, yeah. he's he's gone for now. Or maybe he'll come yep. back. Maybe he never comes back. This season I have two sisters. And I don't know that I'll use them again. The first episode of the year is my sister gets introduced and the neighbor who says, don't forget who your neighbors are. Yeah. He's not in any more episodes. <laughs> not in any more. You just <laughs> you forgot who the neighbor well, was. Well, because that's the last one I shot. It was one of the last ones I shot. Yeah. And it turned out to be the season premiere. And no other show would have let me do that. I couldn't have done that. But nobody gives a shit on my show, I don't think. <laughs> it's amazing. There's one no one on Louis' show that walks in the door and gets a... <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Has to deliver half yeah. the line and then stop and then yeah. repeat it. Like yeah. Richie Cunningham. Like I was saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just thought I... Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought I'd come over and... Uh, <laughs> it's so stupid. It is ridiculous. And then the other characters don't go, why did you stop talking yeah, for what, 40 seconds? What happened? Just look uh, around a little bit or do a little Fonzie thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that Blueberry episode keeps coming up with the listeners. Listen to this one. Mike in New York, go ahead. Louis C.K. in studio, of course. Yo, Louis, what's up, bro? Big hey, fan. thank you. How you doing? Love Lucky Louis. Love the new show. Thanks. Um, for the longest time, I've been trying to get my wife to watch a show. you got to watch it. It's hilarious. And as luck would have it, it was the Fuck Me Daddy show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, dude. You lost her. Man. Oh, well. Oh, oh, she well. Didn't. oh, come on now. Yeah. Look, if that scared oh, her away, tell her to stay away then. Yeah. yeah Best Louis. she doesn't watch. Yeah. Louis doesn't I'll, need I'll her do then. Best, dude. Thanks, man. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you you didn't change the beginning either. Not just the music, but you know sometimes people change the beginning the of the show to show that it's a new season or something. But because I I always now pick out where that guy flips the bird. Yes, yeah. And guy. your face looking, and then look at the camera. It's like, are we still going to use it? Like it's yeah. It's so, there's such confusion in your face. I still but remember then it's just, that. Fuck it. Let's keep eating the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw it as this could be either really good or really bad. Like, he wasn't sure. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was like, fuck, I know we were filming something else, but that just happened. That's a great moment. But he makes eye contact And then it's with like, the will camera. FX allow me to use Which it? Which is there funny. Was, there was a whole thing that I could kind of see in that little little moment. <laughs> I remember when the kid did that. It was an Asian kid with spiky hair, and it was just one of these contrary people. He, fuck you, camera. <laughs> like, for no reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're working here. Yeah. Sorry. 
<laughs> it's like I was working with some musicians doing music for a movie thing, and we were in the East Village when the East Village was like a contrary place. And uh, so we were standing on the corner, me and these musicians with guitars, and this punk rocky guy walks by, and he goes, oh, rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? And Todd Berry was there, and he said, um, yeah, man, we're making an effort to do a thing. What a bummer. <laughs> what what a asshole. bummer. What a bunch of assholes we are. That's what it felt like. This guy's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> fuck camera, fuck you. Fuck you. And it was really funny to me that he did it, and I... The look to me was like, I really hope we got that. Yeah, yeah. Because I wanted to, like, to me, that that moment that that kid gave the finger to the camera, wherever yeah, he is. Yeah, we were just watching it. I thought, um, well, yeah, right? Yeah. This exact, what I'm it's, thinking right at that moment is, I think we're going to get on the air. Cause this, this is a yeah. <laughs> you turn your head, though. You look at him. I'm really you look at the camera. Uh, I know. Because yeah. I thought... That because it gave me a clear vision of like that's gonna be on the on the opening credits. And yeah. Some people will. I I could tell because I knew what lens we were using, and I say he's gonna be soft. And some people will see it, and some won't, and it'll get on the air. Have you ever and, run into uh, that guy? No, no, no. <laughs> does and, and know? I don't know if I don't know if the stuck. standards people realize that I because middle even there. a middle finger is a big thing for us, and we uh -huh. get, I got to fight for them. I've had a few. Um, but you, I don't know if they realize that we're starting every show with, <laughs> with the, the fuck finger. You. <laughs> Why is yeah. the f middle finger a big deal when the language is because uh, it's pretty a clear, edgy. it's a clear fuck. Anything that infers, like on the first episode, we had f this uh, the woman that plays my sister says f her and f them, and they said take it out. We don't allow f you, huh? Because it's just saying fuck you. But I fought them on it and i told him it was really an important i thought i because she wanted it to be screw you or she said or let her say fuck you and bleep it oh and mm. i said but then it really is fuck i was yeah, trying to show yeah. somebody who's trying not to say fuck also clearly she could and i say fuck and she says fuck in this show yeah bleep it but she says f her and it's deliberately her trying to be trying wow. to hold back Wait, so a f her bit. is worse than saying fuck her with the with bleep. bleep yep that's strange those discussions drive me nuts. We have them here every once in a while. Mm -hmm. It's like that doesn't make sense, or no one's going to care in the end, or whatever. Some, t yeah. I mean, I, I, the woman who does it for me uh, at FX yeah. is really smart. She's fucking brilliant, and so I think she helps me because I don't know where the line is. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you just you know say, what I want mean? to. I want to I wanna do this. I, I want to put a this, chocolate uh... bar in someone's cunt and eat it. <laughs> yeah. Can I do that? Can, um, will can America be upset? <laughs> And she's there to say, you know. Can we, can we work with you that? You can do it. Don't call it a cunt. <laughs> so you were able to get F her. Yeah, she yeah. she gave me a little one-time dispensation. Which I think is way more real than bleeping the, the word, yeah. obviously. Yeah, it means something different. When you say F you, right. you're pur purposely trying not to say fuck you. You know right. what I mean? You're right. trying to hold back a little bit. So I said, this is actually a person trying to show some restraint. Yeah, restraint. So... She said, oh, all right, I can see that, and she hey. let me have it. Oh, good for you. But it's still their policy not to say F, wow, F that's you, weird. generally. I, I had no so idea. Odd. I thought that was one they just let through easy. Yeah. No clue. Yeah, but we can we say, obviously, we say a lot of <laughs> nasty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Shit. hilarious. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of good calls coming. I'm trying to figure out. Uh, let's go to Tyson in Oklahoma. Uh, Tyson. Hi, how you doing? What's hey. up, buddy? Hey, Louie, brilliant, man. I love the realism. Everything's fucking dead on. Um, I was going to bring one up specifically, the airport scene. You know, now now I look at it, I'll tell my friends, uh, just pull a Louie, because <laughs> you were so fucking dead on about the lube, the fucking <laughs> the everything was so fucking perfect. And you know what? If, if more people had that honesty, I think it'd be much fucking easier in the airport. <laughs> yeah, the lube was uh, was great. China. Yeah, the that was just the, the lady looking me up and down and going, he's just, he needs this and he's not hurting anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make it like a, a call, masturbate. an authoritative <laughs> call. <and> say, <laughs> a little common sense every once in a while. Let him keep do us all well. Yeah, one quick question after that. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you really make mango pops. <laughs> All the time. I, every time I open a mango, I make a popsicle out of the center of it. It's uh, delicious. Give it to one of the kids, huh? Yeah, fuck that. There's only one. I'm not oh, going to open yeah. two mangoes just to be fair. It's a fucking waste of food. It's not I like that. It's <laughs> not fair. A, if you have a sibling, if you have siblings, you don't you do all the shit equal. It's just dumb. 
it's era. Never, it's never going to have. It's never. What's that? I, I was going to say, yeah, man. It's so real. Love the show, man. Thanks. It's great. I like watching it. Y'all take a good day. You too, sir. I only discovered mangoes in my adult life. I didn't have that shit growing up. Yeah, I fucking a, love mangoes. Yeah. So good. Really good. <laughs> Papaya, not so much. But mangoes, I like the mangoes. <laughs> Want to take a break? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact. All right, so uh, Louie's got a lot going on. Of course, the complete first season's out there to check out if you want to catch up or you just want to have. And uh, FX every Thursday night, 1030, for new episodes. Yes. And then Louie's got a bunch of gigs uh, happening outdoors. Yes. In uh, yeah, New first, England. First week of August. Good time to be up there. Yes. Very good time. Where, where do they go? Louis C.K. for all the dates? Yeah, our ticket. On Twitter? Ticketmaster. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't, don't know how to sell I your tweeted. shows because yeah, there's, I don't know. there's I don't too many of them. much effort. There's too many of them. I don't know. There needs to be a central place. Yeah. I, I know you tweet your gigs and stuff. I so. think if you go to Ticketmaster and put my name in, you get all the live shows. All right, good. Yeah. I mean, you've got to go see Louis this summer. Absolutely. All right. We'll finish up with Louis C.K. next. Stay there. The Opie and Anthony Show. Keep up on all the latest Opie and Anthony show info by checking out our Facebook page online or on your mobile device. Just go to Facebook.com slash Opie and Anthony. That's Facebook.com slash Opie and Anthony. Or on Twitter, Twitter.com slash Opie Radio, Twitter.com slash Anthony Cumia, and Twitter.com slash Jim Norton. Today, Louis C.K. in studio. And uh, during the break, we probably shouldn't have broke there, but I guess we have shit that we have to play. Because now we just talked about film flubs, and I feel like we should just redo every, everything we just said. <laughs> you know? The Midnight uh, Run one was uh, a good one, though. Yeah, if you go back and look at the last scene, the Midnight Run, he gives him a money belt and says, here's money so you can start a new coffee shop. And he goes, how much is in there? And then they shoot this close. You see this close-up of De Niro's hands looking at the money, and you hear Charles Grodin say, it's one hundred thousand dollars, and it <laughs> doesn't sound like it's in the movie at all. They obviously and added it in the thing in the money belt. It's thousand dollar bills, the, the ridiculous non-existent non-denomination. So yeah, I mean, money, I yeah. if you work on movies, you, they do this shit. They fix shit afterwards. Like they they edited it together, and it probably was how much could you fit in a money belt? Probably twenty thirty thousand uh-huh. dollars. So somebody said it's thirty thousand dollars, and they were probably hundred dollar bills. And somebody said you could never start a coffee shop. For our thirty thousand, so, so make them say a hundred thousand. Yeah, but how does it do that in hundreds? Yeah, make them thousands. Make them thousands. But there's no such thing as thousands. It doesn't matter. Just the fucking guy at Paramount wants it to be <laughs> yeah a hundred thousand. So just so they went out in the parking lot of yeah, the editing yeah. bay and, and where's shot Charles Grodin's voice? No, nope. <laughs> no. It's the yeah. And somebody just did Charles Grodin. They get had him do it the over guy. the phone. Yeah, get us the guy from Craft Service. He did yeah. a great Charles Grodin impression. Do yeah. <laughs> that coffee. Yeah. Right. He'll toss him a few bucks. Yep. <laughs> I, I find all that fascinating. I, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I I don't know why it's so satisfying to the viewer to pick out like I saw a camera in the reflection <laughs> in the window. Like it's so satisfying because. I guess you're just assuming they want perfection yes. making the movie, and they do, yeah, uh, to a point. I guess most people. Uh, so you just like I, I caught him. I caught that motherfucker. Yeah, I know that that's not real. Yeah, until yeah. Until I saw that camera, right, I was right. sure this was all real. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I love movies that like shitty old movies that just ignore, like that are so like when when you see a guy with a looking at somebody with a telescope in a movie and yeah. inside the telescope there's editing and cutting do you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> like there's this two different like the guy sees this telescope not only magnifies it also will give you different like close ups <laughs> yeah, yeah single shots and two shots <laughs> it's a great telescope yeah. i want one of those it's like it'll editing inside the telescope push in, it'll <laughs> yeah. uh, that's hilarious one thing that really got me and and it ruined a part of uh, Indiana Jones for me because they did, like, in the making of Indiana Jones, they showed it, yeah. which sucked because every time you watch the movie after that, you notice when that truck rolls over, yeah. uh, you see there, what they did pretty much was have this can that launched a piece of a telephone pole out, which right. which flipped the truck over. Yes. And it's so visible and I mean, obvious you once you know it. it's there. So every time that happens, I'm like, oh, there's the pole, the yeah, piece that's it. flipping the truck but why, over. Why don't you pick up on it the, without 
You know what I mean? You might have, but you're so into the scene. Well, subconsciously, well, this is the first time off. you watched it. Yeah. You get lost in something when you're watching it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just like, oh, that chick's in the back of that truck. It just But blew then up. when Holy someone shit. tells you it's there, you're like, oh, now, my God, now, it, it every ruins the scene. Time. Every time. Yeah. And you notice, like, as it's flipping over, the friction from it hitting the ground kind of makes it do this weird spin turn. Yeah, so, so it just it ruins the scene now. Yeah, <laughs> when they show there is a scene in uh, it's to, magic. I think it's To Kill a Mockingbird, old Gregory Peck movie. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Somebody shoots a dog, and yeah, uh, the rabid dog. Yeah, yeah. And I think what they did was they tied a, a string to the dog's back leg. And they just yanked it. <laughs> this dog doesn't know it's in a movie. The dog is like just barking, and then all of a sudden, fuck! It just <laughs> hey, shit. What the fuck is that? About? That's obviously before Peta. <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't allow that, huh? What What I used to love with in in westerns, what they would do to fucking horses, knock them down. Oh my God. <laughs> now it's just CGI horses or whatever the fuck yeah. you got to do. But they what? used to <laughs> take them. They fucking plow rain a horse where the guy would lean over, grab the rein by the bit. Twist the fucking horse's yes. head around, and the horse would just collapse. Yep. And down on his knees, Nightmare he's trying to get horse. up, and it's just like cut, Prince, perfect, beautiful. Yeah. That's a great one. Fuck set the horse. up, set up for the fifty horse collision. <laughs> right. What the <laughs> fuck are you guys doing to these horses? Yep. This is terrible. <laughs> Yeah, because it would make it look like the horses are being shot. The horses are being and, shot, yeah. they're oh, falling down. Fuck, or yeah. for some reason, if the guy got shot, the horse would have to fall, too. Yeah. So yes, like, yeah, you shoot a guy on a horse, ah, it's the a horse hole. The falls down. The horse, he's so upset that his master got shot, he had to collapse. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this, this guy just spot. Well, I'll let him say it. John in North Carolina. You're on Yo. with Louis C.K. What's up, buddy? All right, Louis, you're the man, first off. But Thank I you. hate and despise when there's a stunt double. And you could clearly, it's so blatant. It could be like, you know, John Travolta, and there's a weird black guy stunt double playing him. It, they do such a bad job of matching it up. Take they, it out of the they've movie. gotten better they over have the gotten years. better. We yeah, were talking in turn of the break. Old, now. Yeah. Face Off is, I know it's a pretty shitty movie, but Face Off is the worst for that because there's so many action scenes, and Nicolas Cage and John Travolta are pussies and would refuse to do everything. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's horrible. Peace. I uh, like I like no, the uh, stuntmen with the, uh, the 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 best shots of the fire shots, because yeah. it's just some guy and he's in a car, and and the car crashes ah bursts into flames and this guy gets out in a NASA space suit yeah, and, he, and he's just his arms are straight out he's yeah, he's like walking a little and and there's gel you can see the gel dripping yeah. and he falls down and it cuts right after that because the yeah. crew's got to come over and put him and out put him out there's some of the worst fucking no, it's fire worthless. scenes what was <laughs> what I'd was... rather bad stunts than bad CGI though when they have yeah yeah then like there's some movie that I just saw a trailer. For and uh, they, it's some oh it's the new Planet of the Apes movie oh yeah 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 and they show these apes I'm like I, that's a fucking cartoon I don't believe that for a second cartoony ape they don't look the slightest bit, bit real to me yeah I'm not gonna go see that I guess shit. it was hard to get chimps to get do the real thing fucking Roddy McDowell in a fucking mask <laughs> yeah they figured it out they did it that... back in the se- it's like we, it's the same as we landed on the moon in the seventies Roddy McDowell did we? in a mask and we made did Planet we? of the Apes in the seventies and yeah. somehow we forgot all of that. Yeah, 40 years ago, they made him look CGI. real. Yeah, You're right. They just put a mask on a fucking actor. The gorillas looked great in the first Planet of the Apes, too. They were amazing. They were really, like, menacing looking. Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. Uh, the, their budgets got cut. And then, what was it, the second or the third one, you could see the Halloween mask? Oh, it was just horrible. Even in the background of, of the first one, they would the primary players would have the good makeup on Amazing that would take makeup. hours. Right. But in the background were just plastic mask guys. <laughs> like but, and you can band. see they're just like arr, arr, <laughs> there's a little hole for the mouth. And one of those terrible. in the they making of they they said though, of as the movies went on, they really had a tough time. Yeah, you know. And the mask looked horrible. Yeah. Makeup. Hey, we should show Louie. Maybe you even seen it. What was the movie? Back to the Future, the Western one where the kid's like, my dick. Remember that? Oh, where Can he you touches show? his dick. And I can't. That's a weird one. That is odd. I don't know what this fucking kid was thinking. The best, the best in the movie. Uh, explanation that I've heard for this was that he had to piss and was trying to get the attention of somebody else. But they him. left it in. That's, that's the best. Have I you ever do. seen this? No. Oh, uh, they don't find it yeah. fast. Punch that up. Uh, yeah, because that isn't even like a. A continuity has, or film. It's a very plus. strange thing. It has the, the, nothing to do with the movie. The kid just does it. It's one of Doc Brown's kids when they come back on the train for some dumb reason. He said the time machine was bad and had to be destroyed, but he made one out of a train. <laughs> hey, is it, well, that's what, when, once, <laughs> when they make sequels of stuff a lot, 
they know they're getting people to see it because of the earlier ones. Yeah. So right. they don't even they go like, do we really have, have to, to try? Yeah, we don't have to. Try. Do we have to reshoot that? So, yeah, yeah really. let's just use that. Not really. I, Especially the. It's like we know we're not making another one of these. Yeah. As right. Danny finds that, I got Am something I else. Be able to hear it. Oh, is this it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There. Really? So you get these. It's the blonde kid. <laughs> it's the little blonde kid. Now it's a race. Of course it's a race. <laughs> but what does that mean? All right. It means Look at him. No He's pointing at his dick. First he does. Yeah, make. first he goes, come here, come here. Oh, I hope they go back to it for a slow mo. Here we go. Look. <laughs> He's going like this. He goes, come <laughs> here. Boom. And then he, he goes, come here, come here. Come here. <laughs> and then he goes, boom. And then he starts pointing at his dick. My dick. <laughs> this video ends That's with. Great. What the fuck? Uh, what the that's fuck? Louis, what is that? A kid that probably has to pee? Or is I he think he's trying to tell his mom, I need to pee. I need to his pee. mom's right off camera. Yeah. I need to K pee. Kids do that all the time when yeah. you're shooting with kids. Yes. They just, they don't give a fuck. They don't care about the shot. <laughs> they Hold it in, you fuck. Uh, this, a great performance is going on. You're in the background. Yeah. I don't care. They felt like they had to leave it in there, though. I they mean, someone have. had to have picked up on it. Oh, well, I'll edited. tell you why. Because is that the real, that's blown up, or is that the... That's, well, yeah, I think the second and, and this is blown up. Because the there's, uh, there's a fucking, look at how much, the, look at the, let me see the wide <laughs> shot. <laughs> let me see the wide shot, the, the, the original yeah. shot of it. Look how much is going on here. Yeah, there Just is a stop, lot of stop shit. Stop on the shot of the kid. Stop. All right. You've got a fucking dog. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be, and you have two children. Uh, this woman, uh, fucking Lloyd, what's his name? Christopher Lloyd. Christopher, Christopher Lloyd probably was like, he came out of his trailer <laughs> and it'd be like, we got fucking 40 minutes with him. <laughs> and then he's leaving. <laughs> That's probably the back of Michael J. Fox's head. <laughs> yeah. There's like, a, it was just so much goes. The, there's and, spinning steam machines. Yeah, there's a thing of the, there was something wrong with every take. It's pro right. probably there's one take where the dog was licking the, the his, Christopher Lloyd's ass. <laughs> <laughs> there's one take where the kid on the left was looking right at the lens. Yes. <laughs> there's some oh, editor somewhere good. who was like, "We're leave. We're gonna use the fucking shot. We gotta use the dick touch of the shot." The kid saying, "I gotta go to the one. bathroom." It's not like people could freeze it at home play, again. Play it again. That's amazing, though, that the kid, and with the music, w once you have all the trappings of the scene. Yeah. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> my, <laughs> my dick. <laughs> and then and he, then he right does the look at the lens. Flashes the he lens. looks right at the lens. And then he's going to say something. I think he's yeah, going to he say is. something. He does. I think they cut. Go back Go to the, back to the again. full Fuck shot this, again. Uh, this is the weirdest yeah. scene. It means he does this. He points at his dick. He looks at the lens. Your future is whatever you make it. And then he looks up at his mom probably and goes. Yeah. And, and he's going. I have the pee pee. I have the pee pee. I have the pee pee. Yeah, he was about to talk. He was ready to talk. He's definitely mouthing something. Oh, wow. Your future is whatever you make it. For making that dog one. Both of you. <laughs> he had so a piss. Weird. The kid had a piss. What are you gonna do? Isn't that a weird one? It's really strange. <laughs> Dumb kid. Let me uh let me go to <laughs> Bill in Brooklyn. Uh Bill, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Uh, I was watching a show and they were interviewing Shirley Temple and she was told about when she was a kid she filmed the movie that took place in Africa. And there was a part in the movie where the kids these little black kids gotta run down a hill and they're supposed to fall. So when they scream action, they tell the kids to run down, and there's a guy at the bottom of the hill with a rope, and he pulls the rope <laughs> so all the kids purposely fall down. And she talked about how they were fucking crying and everything else, and all cut up. I found it hilarious, but she says that's wow. what they the equal rights in the 60s. Wow. Yeah. Boy, to have been able to do that. <laughs> Just imagine what you could do. Love. Yeah, I mean, I used, I do that to actors. Sometimes you don't tell them what's going to happen because you want to get a natural reaction. Oh, right. Um... But yeah, boy, to be able to do that to kids, yeah. The greatest, uh, the greatest behind the scenes I ever saw was for Close Encounters with working with kids, because that little kid, how they they did the scene where uh, the aliens are coming into the house mm -hmm. and the kids looking around all freaked out, and then he looks at what you, you perceive as one of the aliens, and he starts first he's startled, and then he gives this puzzled look, and then he starts smiling. Yeah, and, and it's like, how the fuck did you get a kid to do that? And they showed how it was done with 
uh, a friend that he had made on the set out of mm -hmm. one of the grips or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, he was dressed in a gorilla suit in a box. So when the kid walks into the kitchen, he hits his mark and looks. He sees a box in there. And then the box top comes off and there's a gorilla. So he steps back all startled. And then the friend took the gorilla head off and smiled at the kid. And the kid went like, hey, oh, and started smiling. Yeah. Wow. And, and the way it's done, you look at the shot and go, that kid just looked at a fucking alien. You know, and he, and he was That's startled. Great. He did it. It was all, and it was all Spielberg. It was all fucking Spielberg's idea to, was, to put it in the box and get this reaction from this kid. It was amazing. Spielberg but, was was he was the best with kids. He'd always have those greatest. little Spielberg kids with their little Spielberg kid haircuts. <laughs> all that if you shit. look at the DVD from Jaws, there's this horrible thing where there's a guy who gets bit in half, and he's holding a kid, and the shark is pushing him through the water. Yeah, and he's in the shark's mouth holding a child. <laughs> Because he's saving the child, even though he's being eaten. Yeah. And they cut. It was just too gross. It was too gross. They fucking cut it. Holy wow. shit. <laughs> it's in the DVD. You get to see, like, a shitty, like, one shot of it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I've, see, I've seen some of the extras on that one. I don't, I don't remember seeing that one, though. Some even modern movies, like uh, the Mel Gibson's movie, The Jesus One, um, The Last Passion, one, Passion, the Passion of the Christ. Christ. Yes. He's wearing a fucking suit of torn flesh. Like, by the time you get to the point where he's been... <laughs> Yeah, his blood's his body's been torn up. Mm. He the only way to do it, like he can't lacerate into a body, <laughs> right. so they put a skin suit over him. If you look at the, the those scenes in the movie, they put a skin suit over him and then cut that up, and he looks like he's fat. He looks like <laughs> oh, heavy. He, he's a little heavier. Yeah, because it's Jesus too, put on a little weight yeah, during that looks walk. Like, yeah, ugh, Jesus. <laughs> I think of the walkie talkie. Hey, 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 Jesus, what the hell's going crunches, on? Some crunches, Jesus. Like he's got kind of like love handles. <laughs> I love handles. Hey, let's go back to Indiana Jones. I do remember this one. Uh, Doug, go ahead. Hey, uh, you talking about <laughs> Indiana Jones earlier. When he gets dropped into that tomb place, and there's all the snakes on the ground. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And snakes, and he's staring at that cobra. There's a piece of glass between uh, Indiana Jones and the Cobra, and you can clearly see his reflection in the glass. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in, in, in the later versions, they uh, they CG'd that out. They got rid of they it. They actually got rid of his reflection. But, yeah, he was he was facing off of the Cobra right when he falls, and they said they meticulously went through to clean this fucking glass to make sure you didn't see a spot on it. And there's his reflection in the fucking glass. Wow. <laughs> I There's a few was, movies well, where if you screw s freeze DVD frames, sometimes people cut right on the hairy edge, like right before something happens. Oh, something happened. Yeah, yeah. But you can see on Doctor Strange Love, there's a scene with um, George C. Scott in the war room. I don't know yeah, how well you yeah. remember the movie. Oh, yeah. Hell but yeah. But he gets upset and he starts running over to these I'll guys to make a point, <laughs> And he falls down and he like rolls over, head over heels. And then he gets on one knee and says something it's a really weird moment and if you cut right before they um cut away i mean if you freeze right you see him start everybody starts to laugh oh really like he <laughs> fell down during a take and then he said his line anyway and then everybody bursts out laughing he starts laughing there's one frame and of they him left breaking one character because <laughs> they wanted every second they had yeah so when you <laughs> when you cut a frame of a movie you burn a frame you when you cut actual film, you have to destroy a frame. So sometimes they end up having to leave one in the because it's like you have to cut in twos, you know. Mm -hmm. So if they cut further back, they would have lost. They would have lost much. part of the scene, so they, they got to leave the other yeah. one. Yeah, so they had to leave a little oh, bit. Shit. <laughs> but watching it projected, you would have never seen it. You could probably find that. Oh, that's it's cool. a funny moment to see. <laughs> Love that because they're just some of these huge major motion pictures and uh, yeah, yeah, Whoops. little fuck ups. Whoopsie. That's great. Animal House. No That's... way did they have film flubs in Animal House. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I like the, uh, one of my favorite scenes in Animal House is when um, Flounder's bringing his chicken, his hot girlfriend, and he's just a fat mess. And he brings it through the door, shuts the door. A beer bottle is launched. And I, I, I'm sure it was a prop bottle, but it, it's coming so fast. And it hits her right on the top of her ponytail. And she turns her head like, holy fuck. I mean, it's a real reaction. It just missed smashing her directly in the face. Wow. So and it must it, have been real. Yeah, it hit her ponytail. And she turns her head, and even Flounder kind of looks like, holy shit. <laughs> and they just continue walking. But I don't think it was meant to get that close to her head.
Well, th- this guy actually, shot. actually might have a good angle on Animal House. I was joking with him, but Brian, go ahead. Hi, fellas. Love you. Love the show. Thank there you. is a scene with uh, Dean Warmer and the mayor. It's right at the end where they're having that parade. And there is an old curmudgeon in the background. Oh, yeah. He's Making faces. Crazy. Yeah. Did you see that guy? I yeah. I was just absolutely lost my mind. I thought it was a I've never seen thing. this. There's the a guy in the background, and he's like, He's, hey, bl- he's blinking and making weird faces. Can you find yeah, a King of Comedy? Oh, King of Comedy. King of Comedy. Oh, oh, F- fucking Maury from Maury's M- Wigs. Maury is in the is in behind the, him. Behind him in the restaurant. Matching all of his gestures. Yeah, making fun of him. And he's, matching out of, his he, gestures. he's out of focus. And yeah. He's doing all of the same gestures. As Rupert's really? talking to the chick, yes. he's making, he's like mocking Rupert by imitating him. And it's Maury from Maury's Wigs from fucking from Goodfellas. Goodfellas. <laughs> Who's not an actor, really. No, he's just a, he was a realtor that De Niro knew. Hey, hey. And he threw no, him in the okay. movie. It's okay. So why okay, was he doing kid. that? I don't know why. I don't know why Scorsese that's in there. he did that. Why was that in there? That <laughs> is hilarious. It's one of the strangest things I ever saw in a movie. <laughs> There is a scene in uh, the Batman, the one that da- Danny DeVito plays the penguin. Mm-hmm. Uh, the penguin is going to visit his parents' grave, and and he's walking through a cemetery, and all the headstones are wobbling because they're just shitty styrofoam, <laughs> and they're all fucking wobbling. And yeah, then what? he disappears. He by the way, yeah, he's he's only in a few takes. He's only in a he's only in one take. So whenever they use that take, but they go back and forth. No, and, he'll be and in the over again. the shoulder shot. He disappeared. He was there already. You see him arrive, though, and then you see him start laughing and leave, like after he gets bored of doing it. That's so weird, man. Where is it? Was he in the earlier part skip of this? Skip ahead. Yes, yeah, skip ahead. He's going through his autograph book. There he is. Okay. There, there he is. is. Okay, so now he's sitting there and he's wa- clearly watching him. Yeah. See, and he's trying to keep himself in the frame there. Yeah, yeah. yeah he moved over, so yeah. Watch, Rupert, watch Rupert's the showing cameras. out the autograph book and bragging about celebrities that he has met and got autographs from. And then Maury from Maury's Wigs just starts imitating him. Yeah, here we go. Ready? I think it starts now. Yeah, because he sees she's kind of like, eh, well. I, but why would Scorsese do this? I'm not sure why. This is a, come on, come that's on. That's good. If I, if I ever meet him... And get We're to interview to him. Me. I want to ask him. It's about the only this thing scene. I want to know about. It's the him. only thing I want to know <laughs> is why did you put him in there mocking him over he his shoulder? He keeps moving over, knowing he'll be in. He big... starts smiling, and he's completely, uh, you know, he's not in focus. He's in. He's kind of in the background there. Yep. Looking right at the two of them. Yeah. Might as well turn up a little volume, maybe. Yeah, it's nice. Right here. Do you think uh, he was just on set and? Yeah, he well, he was a friend of De Niro. And it thought he yeah, wasn't yeah. going to be in the scene? No, there's no way. No, there's no way. You're yeah, fucking looking at... And he's making fun of... But, you're shooting this. Nobody doesn't see him. He's so <laughs> he's right there. prevalent in the frame. So, I don't understand that at all. Boy, this takes a lot longer than we... I know, remember. right? That's Rupert. Tough kid. We're, we're in overtime anyway. Who cares? Mm. Click, click ahead a little bit. No. <laughs> Rupert Pupkin. Pupkin. Take this as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of I could watch the scene anyway. Here we go. Yeah, I know. It's fantastic. Yes. Your shrink? <laughs> That's very funny. No, Jerry Langford. That's right, the Jerry Langford. He's going to start now. Yeah, yeah. Would you believe it? I you think he's, t- he's been listening to his bullshit. But you're looking at the Here, see? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he starts mimicking his body movements. A guy can get anything he wants as long as he Love this the movie. Price. God What's damn. so funny about that? I mean, crazier things have happened. <laughs> he's he's, <laughs> he's <laughs> shaking his head. He's I've never fucking... seen this before. Coast, coast yeah. National TV, a bigger audience than the greatest comedians used to play to in a whole lifetime. A shot at a free ticket on the comedy circuit. A comedy show of my own. <laughs> <laughs> he's just... Why is this in the movie? I have no idea. I'd love to know why. And then he just gets up and leaves. Yeah. Way up top so we can look down at everybody and yell, hey, tough luck, suckers. Better luck next time. And he, he doesn't walk past him. He just walks away yep. behind them. That is the oddest. That's strange. Has it ever been two or three gestures? Has it ever been explained? I've I don't never. Know anybody, I don't even know if the YouTube people even comment on it there. Wow. It's just one of those wow. weird little wow. things. Wow. That is really strange. 
It, it's it's funny. <laughs> it's fucking yeah. funny, but it's weird. I don't know what made him do it. Well, Scorsese's a little bit trippy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little strange. Like Mean Streets, which you should go back and watch. You yeah, haven't seen that in a while. It's so good. But there's really, you know, it's a scene about these kind of like uh, scrappy mobsters in the Greenwich Village in the 60s. But then there's a scene where a guy goes, hey, come into my, uh, this guy that owns the bar. He goes, come in the basement. I want to show you something. He has a tiger in a fucking cage that he bought. <laughs> and they're all like, what the fuck are you doing with this tiger? And uh, it's kind of a funny scene. But then he gets in the cage with the tiger and he starts hugging the tiger. And it gets really quiet, and they all just stand there staring at him. <laughs> and he's, fuck? like, hugging this tiger and, like, talking to it softly. It's a really intense scene that makes no that's That completely. makes no sense in the movie. No, like, yeah. In the context there? of the movie, yeah. That's so fucking odd, man. Right, let's get uh, Louie out of here. <laughs> all right. Let's get us out of here. Yeah, which means we get to start our I'm week. Out. I'm out. Louie, always a pleasure. Holy man. shit, Thanks, it's guys. Friday. We're just... Oh, by the way, I will be on Red Eye nice. this evening um, right. with Andy Levy is hosting because I guess Greg Gutfeld has some something more important than his own fucking show to do. Mm. He's, on, uh, he's on our show next week. Oh, is he? We did a scene that takes place on Red Eye. Oh, really? So we shot okay, it on cool. the set, oh, and very Greg cool. is in it, and he was great. Yeah, Greg's, Greg yeah. is really good. Yeah, yeah, I like Greg. Andy Levy is hilarious, too. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, guy that does the mid-show mid, mid show and uh, end of the show uh, uh, wrap-up. He's so you're hilarious. Going, you're and going he's to do that tonight? Tweet. Yeah, I'm doing that tonight. I'm not sure, because usually when Andy d hosts... Um, DeRosa does Andy's part. So, maybe so I'm not DeRosa's sure. On? I might bump into DeRosa tonight. I'm not sure. But were... yeah, I'll be doing that uh, tonight. Set your DVRs because it's three in the fucking morning. We ha we got a last minute call to do Fallon last night. Yeah, last mm -hmm. night, but it was so last minute. I was playing golf. He was shooting guns. Shooting. And they're, they're yeah. calling us going, Crazy. can you be back in the city in an hour? I'm like, in an hour? what? No. Sorry. Kind of bum though. And but I got to go get my herd call, dude. Hopefully they'll call us and I'm sure they will. I got to get my herd done. <laughs> I got to go to John Sahan. <laughs> get, get my herd did at the beauty perler. <laughs> well, Louie, nominated Louis for man. four Emmys. Yes, yes. Sir. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for coming. I, I love when you come in, man. It's thanks, just, guys. It's, it's, it's a great just fun. We blew talking. off everything. I'm very sorry about last time I was, I uh, overslept. <laughs> oh, yeah. We figured I that's the up. last we were going to see of Louie. <laughs> yeah, it was a total mistake because I'd just gotten an iPhone, which I hate, and yeah. I'd set the alarm, oh. and I didn't know how the alarm worked. But we're such insecure assholes. We're like, say, another guy. Shit, fuck Another who, guy who, who gets two seasons. Do it, who would do it that way? Uh, <laughs> and, you know what I'm going to do? This way I'm going to send leave. a signal. Wait, I forgot. I meant to be a and, then, and then go, oh, sorry. Get the message, asshole. <laughs> yeah. But immediately. Get the message. We don't, yeah. Yeah. Immediately, we don't even think about the relationship we have. Yeah, no. see another guy. Yeah, yeah. Years, yeah. Of, years of you coming yeah, on, on the having road fun. With you guys. Yeah, on the road. It's and then fucking... one time he's like, yeah, see? I woke up late. I missed the oh, show. That's it. Yeah, oh, fucking Louis too yeah. big for the show now. <laughs> yeah, no, why? Because we, we are assholes, no, Louis. No, why? Everybody because is. we know in 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 this world, this uh, media world, we're shit. Yeah, Radio I mean, everybody in this business is like that. Last time I was here, I was waiting for Roland downstairs for twelve minutes, and then I just went fine. I'm going home. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I guess I guess I don't matter like I used to here. This I used to come right down and get me. Fine, fuck it then. We're fuck all, it, I'll go home then. Why are we all just, just a baby? We're insecure assholes. That's yeah, the worst. We're barely yeah, holding on to this relationship just, uh, on both ends. Horrible. <laughs> it's just <laughs> horrible. What's so, going on? Uh, all right, well, Louis. Yeah, Louis. Uh, I'm fantastic again. Uh, Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Yeah, we'll be you watching uh, Louis on FX uh, Thursday yes. nights at ten thirty. Of course, first season is available. It's and hilarious. Louis got a bunch of dates in New England. So go to uh, something dot com. Just where where do they go? I, well, LouisCK dot net. I think has my tour dates on it. Yeah. And then you on Thursday. What? Oh, I'm doing Letterman on Thursday. Yes. I, wow, you understood that? We have a hard time understanding yeah. Roland. We don't. Sometimes. We don't speak Roland yet. I thought you said that, Leatherman Thursday. Yeah, Leatherman. Leatherman. And uh, I had I no it was idea a movie what you were that filming or something. <laughs> right. I didn't know. They're Friday. making a movie out of the Leatherman. <laughs> yes, Leatherman. <laughs> Leatherman. Leather. Opens Friday night. It's right. a very good knife that gets rusty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have Louis, a great thanks, uh, weekend. We'll see you Monday, Louis. Thank you. Bye bye.